Hello everyone and welcome to my Japanese inspired world. I've been building up a cozy little world within a bamboo jungle for a while now and I wanted to put all of the moments together that led up to all of these builds being added into our world so I made a cozy movie for you all to enjoy. It is a longer one so it's perfect for cozying up and watching it or having it on in the background as you study or sleep. If you're new to my content I hope you enjoy the cozy builds, the chaos, and all of the adventures that I go on. Now let's get into it. Here we are, guys, and I'm in a flower. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this world. <gasps> Here we are, guys. It's 1.20, and this is my spawn block, so I have never done this before. But we are going to start out by immediately marking our little spawn block right here by this little flower here. So this was our spawn block. So we're just going to do a nice little tower up. All right, we have marked out our spawn block. This is our little, uh, as Nash Crafter says, spawnument. I like that term. But let's let's punch a tree. We'll get some resources collected. So we punched our very first tree. Made our very first crafting table. Made some sticks so we could then make our first pickaxe. And then our first axe. Went mining for cobble to upgrade those to stone. Then we made our first stone pickaxe and axe. Mined up a bit more cobblestone for the road and for furnaces. Made a furnace. Picked some wildflowers. Started collecting wool for a bed. Picked some more wildflowers and then went to go find some food. Sorry pig, I need some foods. Hi bud, sorry. All right, we're gonna go up over this forest since this is where this little cherry biome is and let's go grab some saplings and explore the cherry biome for the very first time. Look at these particles. They're so pretty. In this series, I did want to mention that I did pre-select this seed because of what was around spawn and because I found an amazing jungle biome that I'm super inspired to build in. So in choosing this seed, there is every single wood type pretty close to spawn. So if you want a seed that has lots of wood types, I highly recommend this one and you can check the description. Okay, let's grab a little cherry tree in the night. I'm a little scared now, not gonna lie. It's fine, everything's fine. Ooh, I like the, the how this wood type sounds. Oh, this is so pretty. Oh, I love it. Oh, the particles. Oh, I need shears so I can take these with me. I love these petals so much. I think my favorite thing that Mojang did is there's four different amounts of them. Oh, it's just so pretty. I love it so much. It's so cute. All right, guys, and over here by spawn, we have this village, but I'm not gonna go in it because this is one of those infected villages and I don't want them to uh, die by chasing me. And so we're gonna come back to that village and maybe that can be a project where we actually like completely cure the entire village. That would be a fun project. We can transform this little village on the plateau and edge of the cherry grove. I think that would be great. But we're gonna grab some iron and then go and grab more saplings. Made our first iron pickaxe and axe, and then we made some shears. Then we started collecting all the different sapling types, starting with oak, cherry wood, and of course we had to grab the cherry leaves because, well, I, I like the particle effect. Went and grabbed some spruce, grabbed some dark oak, and then some birch. Now that we've found a bunch of different wood types, we're gonna go and look for that village on the other side of this little spruce mountainside. When we got to the village, we did the usual check all the chests, sleep in the bed, take the beds, pillage, and all of that good stuff. All right, I just found myself some leather boots and I think we're gonna dye them because I did that last time and it was just fun to have some dyed leather armor. Yep, yep. Fashion. Let's dye these magenta. Look at that. Our leather boots are dyed. <laughs> it's kind of fun to try new colors on for size. This is so cool. I love this feature and it's dark. So I'm going to just you know, uh, set up my bed in here. Yep. Ooh, I see crying obsidian. There's a portal. Let's go see what's. Oh my, this is very precarious. Should we jump? 
and we'll see uh, if this kills us or not. But here we go. Now you might be thinking, Red, that's such a silly thing to do. And yes, yes it was. <laughs> oh, yep. And... Yep. We respawn. Next to our little spawnument. That was not what I was hoping for, but also me jumping precariously off of ledges that were a little too long for me to make and clear. Um, kind of does also check out. Iron Golem, keep me safe as I wander your village looking to steal a bed. Thank you, I appreciate it. Oh man, it feels good to be in the village, except I need to find... Okay, that is just unfair. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> okay, we need to find where we left our stuff behind. Okay, I just saw all of my stuff there and now it's gone. I literally think I just missed it and it just despawned all of my stuff. Oh no! Ugh. Okay, you know, not every Minecraft series is a perfect start. The best of the best. Sometimes you do something silly and it doesn't work out and now you have to start all over again. We need to go back and get cherry blossoms because I need those in my, in my base area. And just like deja vu, we were doing and seeing things all over again in order to get back up to where we left off. Gave some love taps to some cows. Look at these guys, they're so cute. Oh, and the baby. Oh, I love it so much. I wanna take them home with me, but we have to go so far away and I don't have leads. But look at that guy in the flower. <gasps> He's so cute. Enough getting distracted. We need to get everything back that we just had. So I'm just gonna speed through this. So yeah, let's, let's get right to it. Well, hello, guy. I have zero emeralds for you, but you have something that I want. I'm not going to harm your llamas, don't you worry. I just want their leads, so if they both want to get in the boat, there we go. No harm, no foul, I'll F3B it just to make sure I don't hit them. See, llamas are fine. No one was hurt. Okay, yeah. Now, that I have some birch, I've got some oak and spruce. We're going back. Now we work our way up the mountainside. And it didn't take long till once again we were distracted, but for a good reason, because we were about to boat down and get a whole bunch of ores collected. Then we stumbled upon this ginormous cave that goes all the way down to Deep Slate and I knew that I had to go and explore it. So that was our next mission once I made some better tools and got armor. All right, we're getting some iron armor. We're gonna throw on these iron pants because it's better than nothing, but that cave down there actually looks really nice. So let's go work our way down into this cave here. And we use the boat method to get down there because I was not about to die again to fall damage. All right, I'm just gonna go around and collect a bunch of ores here, so let's cue a montage. All right, we finally found a chest, so let's see what we get in here. A golden apple, you know, I'll take it. And after that bit of mining, we were able to get a stack and a bit of iron. So we started smelting that up and then I made another furnace to speed up that process. Then we set that to smelt and we went exploring a bit more. Oh my gosh, guys, I just noticed there's deep dark down here too. <gasps> oh, hey, and diamonds. We're gonna deal with that later. For now, we need to wait until all of our iron is smelted up so that we can start getting full iron gear and iron tools. Looks like we can make our chest plate, our helmet, and our boots. So let's get all of these on. Okay, look at that. I do hear some zombies, so I'm gonna make my shield again because I did lose that. 
And now we're just gonna be a little bit safer, so I'm feeling much better about having a shield to keep us safe. But I'm gonna make some more tools, and then we're gonna go try to get those diamonds. We'll see how that goes. It is by Deep Dark. And Deep Dark on episode one, after I've already died once, probably not too smart. It's pretty crazy that after I died and all of my stuff despawned, we are like way more prepared than I was previously. So, you know, I would say honestly, that death was a good thing because now we're like way further ahead and we were able to find this cave, which looks super cool. All right, now we've got torches. So we're gonna light this up because this is a great cave area. So let's go exploring and light this up some more, shall we? Okay, now it looks like if I just decide to drop down this waterfall, it gets us all the way. Creeper, let's dance. Okay, let's keep going. Get each other, hit each other. There we go. Yeah, you fight. I'll just quickly, you know, put some torches down. Wait till one of you dies, it's fine. All right, I think I just heard one of you die. Oh, there's diamonds there too, yes. I absolutely love how we can see where the ores are in this pack with just the glowingness to them. Oh, look at this, there's like three little piles, four. Oh, this is so good. Let's just get the sneak advancement, shall we? Sneaky, sneaky, there we go. We got it and we're leaving immediately. Don't need to be around here for now. I just wanted to get a cool advancement cause it's fun. Oh, we have at least eight diamonds. This feels so good. Oh my gosh. I did not expect to get diamonds. Oh, there we go. This early and full iron. Like this is happening pretty quick considering for us just having to like, Oh no. No, thank you. Oh. Get out. Get out of here. Get out of here. I hate these guys so much. Oh my gosh, that scared me so bad. That is my cue to work my way up. And the fact that we just had the baby zombie, oi. Once back on the surface, I took a screenshot of these cords and then I decided to go and find supplies to make the brush. Okay, now I think I have everything I need to make the brush. I have a feather, I have string and I have copper. Is that how you make the brush, right? No? Okay, never mind. I take it all back. I will Google. Turns out I needed a stick and then the copper and then the feather. <gasps> Here we go, guys. Oh my gosh, we have another thing from the 1.20 update. Look at this, it's a little brush. Wow, listen to the sound and the particles. Oh, I love this, oh my gosh. I hope that on our way to the base location I've already picked out, we're able to find some structures because I would love to be able to use this. Oh, it's just so cool. But I'm gonna make some boots real quick just because I don't want to get stuck and 
in our classic fashion, I'm actually going to make them yellow this time. And you know, maybe these will give us more luck with our fashionable yellow leather boots. Cause we do have to go north, which means we're going over this mountain biome and there's definitely gonna be some powdered snow. On our way over the mountain ridge, we saw some savannah in the distance, so we began boating over there. Once we arrived, we grabbed some of the saplings and acacia wood, checked the ruined portal that was nearby, and we swapped out our helmets since the gold one did have protection too. Next, we ran across a sunken ship, and we found one of the armor trims, and then a buried treasure map which we followed and uncovered. We grabbed the diamond, the iron, and then it started to rain and we turned and noticed... <gasps> Wait, there's a village up there! I explored this village, but there wasn't a whole lot that I took from it. Just some extra food, some saplings and emeralds. I took a bed, but that was pretty much it. So I decided to go back to my boat to continue traveling. And I walked up to a cave out of curiosity, but then uh, noped right out of that cave and kept walking away. With my cords, we are on our way. I remembered that we were by a dark oak forest, which I was super excited about. So the build style that we're going to go, we are going to be using the bamboo blocks and of course the cherry wood, but the vibe that I'm going for is actually going to be a more Japanese themed base because of the bamboo blocks being able to make some really cool things. I thought it would be a really fun way to use them. I picked this seed because of this really pretty jungle, but I also love how you have a little bit of dark oak nearby with the little mushrooms because it just reminds me of our 1.19 series. But right in the middle of this seed, there is actually an island. And we are going to be putting our starter base inside this little island bit here. So we just have to get through all of this bamboo. All right, guys. So we are going to use this little spot right here for our base area, our starter area. If I quickly go into free cam, this is like a little island, and I think this is a really safe place to put our starter base, but this is what we got, guys. I cannot wait to transform this whole area all around us. We already have some panda friends over there, which I knew were gonna be in here because of how much bamboo is all around us. Let's go onto our little island, do some clearing out, some setting up, do some official Minecraft base claiming things. So we're going to put down our bed, have our spawn be set here. We've got our furnaces that we have right now and we can make a little crafting table and we're going to create a little uh, chest as well. We'll put some chests here. We'll drop off all our little goodies. Let's put them all in here. So it's official, we're here. We've got some classic Minecraft base claiming done. Now it's time to make this place look a little bit more uh, lived in. Let's do some clearing. Alright, we've got this entire space cleared out and you can see I've already laid out our little floor plan for our house. But we do have these hanging signs now so I thought it would be kind of fun to mark out the areas where we're going to be building and what we're going to put in. Nice. Each room. Every time I'm trying to build, it always starts raining in this jungle. So right here, these two front rooms are still pretty small. This one's a little bit bigger than this one. So I think this is going to be our little kitchen spot. We're gonna have all of our little kitchen needs, little smelting, crafting table, all of those workbenches. Then over here, I think I wanna have a little bit of a living room. Oh, these hanging sides are so cool. So we'll do our little living room here. Look at that. And I can click on it to add more to it. And we can write on the back side of signs. I think this is so cool. Okay, so we have our little living room. We've got our kitchen. This is gonna be our enchanting room because this is uh, clearly our very expensive enchanting table. 
and our bookshelves. So we're gonna make this be our enchanting room. So in the enchanting room, we need to get lots of bookshelves and paper for this because we don't have enough. Then in this back corners here, you can see I have my bed and this is going to be our little storage room. I love these signs. These are so cool. Like just the fact that we have our little chains attached to it, it's just so cute. So we've got our storage room, and obviously this is pretty self-explanatory because I already put the bed in there, but this will be our little bedroom. So this is what we have for our starting rooms. I think this will be great. This will probably last us a while, but this is what we have for our floor plan. And for the build style, we are going with a more traditional a Japanese style house with the roofs that kind of curve up on the edges. And uh, I think it's the perfect build style to have in this jungle. But we do also have bamboo blocks now. And so I wanna chop down some of these and test out what these blocks would look like using them for maybe some of the wall dividers in between our different rooms. Because the Japanese style houses are typically very open, minimalistic, and just clean. And so having these trap doors be dividers instead of full wall blocks is something I think that will look really cool. But I am just curious to see what bamboo looks like as a wood type now, not just a, like a stick of bamboo. So let's go look at what these look like, our new bamboo blocks. I think you have to fill the entire thing with it. Oh, there it is. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Bam. And I'm pretty sure if we put one down, we can strip it. This literally looks like a waffle and it makes me hungry. <laughs> Man, all oh, these are so cool. The stripped bamboo makes bamboo blocks. What about this? Okay, so this just makes the planks. The planks is what I wanted. The planks gives us all of the options. Okay, the trap door is what I'm really excited for. So this is the main block I think is gonna be really cute as like room dividers. So just like imagine just these two as our room dividers in a Japanese style home. I think this is gonna look so cool. This was literally the one piece of the bamboo wood type I was most excited for. But now that we know what we're kind of building with, we're gonna build with some of the bamboo blocks, obviously. But we do need to pick the different color wall blocks and our roof blocks as well. So let's go resource collecting the supplies that we need to make this place. Okay, I just remembered. I was about to go swimming across this canal. We can make a bamboo raft. <gasps> I love new building blocks and new craftable items. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it's a waffle boat. <gasps> Look at this. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. And I think, can we make a chest on this? It's just all new. It's so exciting. <gasps> Bamboo wrapped with chest. Oh my gosh, okay. New boat type. We're trying it again. Oh, this is so fun. I'm so excited to be in 1.20. Like, <gasps> look at this. It's so cool. But we're gonna grab a bunch of this bamboo because I think this is gonna be our floor block. So let's just go into a montage of collecting all of the items that we'll need for our little housey. So I was just gonna go try to find some dark oak because I knew we had dark oak around our area and we found mangrove. And that was the other thing I needed to find because we're going to build our roof edge out of dark oak and then our roof color is going to be mangrove. So that is incredible. What's not incredible is that it's been raining this entire time, so yeah, it's just, it's always raining. We're going to go and grab some dark oak first. Okay. 
Okay, we're gonna see if we get a little bird friend. <gasps> Yay, we have our first pet in the world, guys. Okay, you know the drill. Let me know in the comments below what we should name our little friend here. Now, I want to bring them home. So, can you like follow me with the seeds? Can you come this way, please. You. Okay, Boyd, you stay here. You just relax, you know, you're the new pet. You're guarding this area while I'm gone. So right now what I'm doing here is I'm collecting all of the base blocks for building. So the interior floors, I really wanna use this stripped bamboo block because I think this will look really cool on the floors, especially since we're going for a more Japanese themed area. And then the roof edging, we're going to be using dark oak slabs. And then these other blocks, I'm gonna use probably just some of the bamboo stairs to kind of create like an edging around because we're going to have these middle rooms kind of sunken in so we kind of like step down into them so that's the plan with this but I need to grab the middle roof palette that we're actually building the roof out of not just the roof edge we're gonna build that out of mangrove so I need to go collect a lot more mangrove and a dark oak all right I have my block palette all laid out. We have mangrove varieties, we've got dark oak as our trim, and then our floor is going to be a mix of these bamboo planks and blocks and the mangrove itself. So that's gonna be a little bit of what we're looking at. We're also going to have a little bit of spruce kind of dashed in there as well, but this is the colors that we're going for to start. And yes, they do kind of look like a sniffer and it does kind of make me wanna go look for a sniffer, but I think we're gonna do that in the next episode because we need to get this built before the end of this episode and I you know had the the delay of uh dying and then having all of my stuff despawn and having to start all over again so we're just gonna get into building this thing and I'll see you guys after Now that the time lapse is done, story time. So even though that time lapse looked really smooth and nothing went wrong, yeah, uh, there were mishaps. I died two more times and actually found a jungle temple. So I'm gonna roll the clips in between to just catch up to speed on how I got from my iron armor into this diamond armor and the little mishaps that happened in between because this is probably the most I've died in, in episode one. And just to give you a better idea of how much I struggled to pick this roof shape and dealing with all of the mishaps, we are already on day 101. So I've literally spent 100 days just for this episode one because, well, um, I've died a bunch. But let me roll the clips to catch you up to speed. I went for a quick ore mining session because I was running low on coal and iron and I broke into this giant lush cave that I thought I would have to explore to see if I could find more ores. I picked up my ores, ran into a skeleton, but realized there was two of them and I was taking a lot of damage, so I ran away. Then I realized there were two creepers that were now following me. And I even got down to one heart. I tried to swim up the water stream in order to escape, but the creepers were getting close. The skeletons had me pinned down. As I turned my shield to face towards the creepers, the skeleton sniped me from the side. And so I was back at spawn. As we were boating away, I checked that same sunken ship and found two more of the armor trims, which was super nice. Once we reached the jungle by our house, I realized on the back side was a jungle temple. 
So of course we had to break in and see if we could find one of the jungle armor templates, but there was nothing good in the chests, so we kept on exploring. And the next clip speaks for itself. I'm gonna come up the staircase here. <gasps> Are you for real? I have two piles of stuff. <sighs> After traveling from spawn, we made it back and collected up all of our stuff and we were even able to save our armor trims and then we made our way back home before anything else happened. I had checked the cave for my stuff, but it had all despawned, so I just continued collecting resources so that we could keep on building. And then this dude emerged from the jungle. And you guessed it, he killed me. I went back to fight him, and there was now a second one, so I again died. And this is where the diamond armor comes in. That's it. You know, I wanted to wait until I actually had uh, enchantable armor and an enchanting setup, but I'm, I'm, I'm making it. We are making a chest plate of diamonds. We're making the leggings. I'm sick and tired of being beaten up. Let's go get our stuff <laughs> again. <laughs> and now that you're caught up to speed on all the shenanigans that took place between when that time lapse of me building the house started and when it ended, it is time for the tour of the house. From the outside, we just have two of our cherry trees just creating particle effects. We've got lots of leaves and decorations on the outside. We use the new potted plants and the little cherry saplings to make a cherry bush as our entryway. Around the sides, we just have kind of these containers filled with the new cherry blossom leaves and just some decorations. We added some ferns, some vines, some flowers all the way around. And on the back, it's pretty much the same decorations as well. As we're about to walk in, I did use one of the new hanging signs to make a little sign for our lovely little home. And on the inside, here we go, guys. I created a little hallway, which I think makes it look a lot longer. And using the mangrove and these bamboo planks to run down the length of this hallway does make it look like it's a longer hallway. On the right, we have our little kitchen and cooking and crafting area. I used the bamboo pressure plates to kind of create some cutting board vibes for this kitchen area. And of course, we incorporated the cherry blossom leaves to give us those little particles. On the other side is our living room, and I think this is my favorite room, our living room and eating area. I love how the beds just are a little bit above the dark oak slab, so it does look like these are just floor pillows that we can sit on. And this room is definitely my favorite because of these little floor pillows that I created. And we use the cherry blossom leaves in here to give us the particle effect as well. Walking down the hallway to the right, we've got our bedroom and I added some of the new chiseled bookshelves, except uh, I don't have a lot of paper and leather, so we have one book. We've got our parrot just hanging out by our little mushrooms. We've added vines and some little potted plants in here as well. And we have the cherry blossom leaves giving that particle effect in here. And if we walk across the hallway, we have our little cherry blossom potted plant. And this is our little storage room. I added one of the pots and used the jungle and ferns to create a little shrubbery here. But then we've just got all of our little storage chest area, which is a good amount of chests for a starter house. Now if we walk back into our bedroom, you can see that there is a ladder. You may have noticed in the time lapse that I completely removed the side room where the enchanting room was gonna be. There was so much space up here once I was building that I realized I could just move the enchanting table up here. I, I do need to fix the, the floors a bit, but once that's fixed up, this area is going to be a really cozy, I'm thinking maybe enchanting room and a library, and we can add even more of those chiseled bookshelves once we get more paper and leather, of course. My favorite feature though, is definitely this little balcony here. It's so cute and I like using the bamboo trap doors as our kind of little balcony because you can still see through them and I think it's super cozy. Today guys, we have a problem that we need to work on solving. Working with all these bamboo blocks looking like waffles and food is making me hungry and well, uh, I don't have a solid food source yet. So what we're gonna do today is work on building an animal barn so that we can grow our population of animals and obviously make them a cute place. But I also want to start getting cows collected up so that we can get some leather and a solid food source from, well, uh, 
yeah, killing the, the cows for, for meat and then using the leather to make our enchanting table, which we'll make in a future episode. So that's what we're going to be working on today, but I also want to go uh, mining and explore this giant lush cave that I found nearby because frankly, I'm iron poor and I need iron to be building later today, so it all works out. First things first, we need to bring some supplies along that will help us track down some animals, so I'm bringing some leads, some seeds, and I do have hay bales that I could turn into bread, but I don't want to live on bread for the entire series. So we want some more sustainable food. So for now, we're just bringing the wheat, the seeds, and the leads, and let's go find us some animals. We're also gonna bring some fences so that once I do get them back here, I can just tie them up to the fence posts really quickly while I make them their house. But now, let's go find some animals. Now, I think I remember seeing some cows over on the Dark Oak Island that's over on the other side of all of this bamboo so we're gonna go check over here to see if we can get those cows and move them over here and then we're probably honestly just gonna go exploring the jungle itself to see if there's any other animals by chance but I know for a fact there was cows along here somewhere so we're going to grab them first And I'll put it on another boat because that way I can get two leads back. There we go. And we'll grab some hay again and get those guys to move. There we go. Pick up my other two leads and now I have all four back. Okay. The sheep and cows were the main ones that I wanted to get first, but we will be looking for some pigs and chickens along the way. I know there was some chickens over by the dark oak, but I want to go mining and get some more iron so we can get better tools real quick. So we're going to go get ready to do some mining. All right, we're grabbing a bed to sleep in the caves along the way. I am going to bring a bunch of the wheat with me just so that we have some more sustainable food source besides melons. You know, I didn't want to just live off of the bread, but the bread will, will make us survive. The melons will just be our backup food is all. So on the other side of this little ridge is where I saw a giant drop down into a giant lush cave. So I'm thinking we're just gonna boat over there. We're gonna first try to find some coal because I do need torches. I, I literally have one. So we're gonna go look for this drop down and see if we can find coal. Oh, okay, I see some coal right there, so that's a good start, and right there, okay, let's go grab this coal, and there's some coal over there, so I'm gonna go there first, since, uh, well, this gets very, very precarious, oh, a geode, <gasps> oh, and, like, a bunch of sad dead fish. Okay, I've got some coal, we're gonna make some torches, sleep because it is getting night, and then we're gonna boat our way down into this cave and uh, see what we come up with. I'm hoping that we can just quickly just cover this in torch spam just so that no more mobs will spawn. But we'll see, you know, uh, more and more things are spawning here, so I do need to be careful. 
but let's take a snooze really quickly and I'm gonna place blocks on the side of this just cause it does seem a little scary to sleep right on the edge, so we'll see. Can you imagine? Okay, I'm gonna leave my bed up here because I feel like it's going to be the safest route down and I kind of honestly just wanna send water down here. Let's just send some water down. Okay, now let's, uh, let's work our way down. Slowly but surely, hi fish. Meow. Okay, man, this is so overgrown, it's crazy. But I do really like how many glow berries we have here. I love that so much for us. And we can get this spore blossom and add this to our area. Okay, these things I'm picking up. Look at that, we have a spore blossom. <gasps> oh, okay, hang on. We have to see this place in shaders real quick. And here we are. This is what it looks like in shaders. Oh man, it's so beautiful. <gasps> I want another spore blossom. Oh, I love this. And it's almost fully lit up down here, so then we'll be able to mine and not worry about getting attacked. So let's keep lighting this place up, and then we're gonna start collecting some ores and getting those smelted. Well, I'm part pin cushion, but this is so beautiful. And there's a spore blossom in here. And with shaders on, this is what it looks like. I think I wanna leave this geode because this is just so pretty and cozy. I think I'm just gonna take the coal and the other things from here instead. It's time to keep lighting this up, even though it's nighttime and there's spiders and everything out there. Ooh, lapis, okay, we're gonna pick up lapis because we are in desperate need of some lapis as well. So let's pick up lapis. We actually found a mine shaft. <gasps> Whoa, this one's cool too. And very spooky. Um, <laughs> Very spooky, but I do want to investigate this. Oh geez, okay. I already see spider webs. All right, we'll see how this goes. We'll just grab some ores while we're here. Oh, I see a chest at the end there. Just gotta be careful if nothing else comes by. Jumping down, not being afraid. This is a pretty cool thing to be right by our base area. I'm excited for this. Now we just gotta get to the other side. Let's find out what we got in here. Okay, I'm kind of nervous that there's gonna be some spider or something just waiting to get me. Okay, I'm gonna go around the corner. This is a very quiet mine shaft so far. Watch me jinx myself. But so far, so good. Okay. 
Ooh, a whole pickaxe. I mean, I'll take it. Yes, please. I always put a torch above the chests that I've already looked at just so I can remember which ones I've been to. But we're just going to kind of move ourselves around this bit here and go down this way. Oh, we're like under it. Interesting, okay. <gasps> Ooh, diamonds, yes please. And I think with the diamonds that I find from here on out, I wanna just save them and see what we can get once we actually get fortune three. So I'm just gonna mine these out around them. Is this gonna be one? Are you really just gonna be one diamond? There's not even some poking around, it's just the one dude. That is just a bit sad. I'm gonna mark the quartz just so I can find this one again. And we're gonna grab some of this stuff too. Grab some gold, more iron. So what I've started doing is I have started just closing off the places that I've been so that I don't continue to get lost because it's really easy to get lost in mine shafts. And so this is kind of my strategy to prevent myself from getting lost. <gasps> Whoa. Oh gosh. <gasps> oh, and there's more diamonds. I need to take a screenshot of those. That's good to know. Oh, this is so cool though. This is like a suspended platform. <gasps> wow. I'm not gonna go down there <laughs> because you saw how many creepers were down there. My goodness. So we're just going to hop our way back up the way we came. Anything? Glow like it. Ooh, another chest, and I have not been to this one yet. Whoa, more torches. Let's go in a name tag. Okay, sweet. Okay, we have a name tag. That's so good. Grab more lapis. Ooh, more diamonds. Okay, perfect. Oh, we're on negative 14. No wonder we're only getting them in singles. That makes a lot more sense. I'm surprised I'm actually getting diamonds. Normally it's like 40 levels further down from right here, but I'll, 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 I'll take it. And some more iron. We'll grab the gold as well. Oh no. two babies. All right, I'm calling that my cue to leave. I don't wanna be here anymore. Oh, hey, this is a different chest, right? <gasps> Another name tag, yes, okay. Well, we have been collecting lots of things. We even explored some mine shafts and we've found a lot of good things. So we've stocked up on iron, we've gotten gold, we've even found a name tag, some glow ink, lots of spore blossoms, lots of redstone, a lapis for our enchanting setup, lots of glow berries, amethyst, we even found geodes down here. And we saved the quartz for three different diamond patches once we actually get fortune three and uh, can actually get more diamonds uh, for the, the digging. But since it is daytime, I feel like it's a little bit safer to venture up and I feel like we've done pretty good in here. We've got this geode that we can explore. Hi, sir. Wait, they're going at the same time. They're both jumping. Look at these guys just doing a little jump together. Just dancing it up. And then there's a geode right up over there above here. For now though, it is time to go back up to our base area because frankly, it's been a little bit scary being in the lush caves and the mine shafts because I'm terrified of creepers. 
because of my previous death to creepers in episode one. So we are just going to work our way up this little waterfall here, do some swimming, and I'd say this is pretty good. There's the geode. I think I might leave it because it's such a cute, perfect geode, but we're just gonna work our way up to the surface and head back home from here. Now we just need to build up some pens here, and now that I actually have enough iron to have decent tools for a little bit longer, it's time to lay out the area for our animal barn. Just beyond this little mound here, where all those skeletons kept coming out of, is where we're going to clear some land and put our animal barn. Now, as far as the shape of it, it's going to be more of a rectangular shape, but I'm thinking we're going to just run it all along here and make it probably like 13 to 15 long by maybe seven wide. So as you can see behind me, we got lots of clearing to do, so let's get into it. Now, I'm thinking this is mostly just going to be storage. I do want to add some form of a divider so that we can tell the room apart. So I'm kind of going to come in here with some of these guys and make a divider. So we'll go like this. Bop. Okay, perfect. I like it because then we can have it kind of split up between a hayloft section And if we do need to sleep here overnight, we have that as well. So if we're going off of this line here We've got these Perfect just put those up. Okay. I like this and now with stairs if I go like this and then crouch and place this. There we go. On the outside, it will look like a full block still, but I can open the chest. So if I go into free cam, this looks exactly the same, but on the inside, it's a stair. And I honestly think this will make the place look a little bit more open just because there's not the full blocks in the way. 
and our stairs perfect okay so we've got a little bit of storage in here and then i'm thinking that on this other side we'll add have more of the like barn like hay bales we'll have barrels as well and then let's add some glow berries in here we'll add our spore blossom onto our ceiling the beams will run across we'll have some glow berries hanging to add some pretty greenery to it all i think it'll look really good and then we're gonna go get a bunch of our hay bales because i want to stack up a bunch of hay bales right in this section and this will be the barrels for just all of our extra storage but this will be pretty open i might add something in the middle here just to kind of fill the space Maybe we'll add like some tables, like if they're just hanging out, you know, waiting for all the animals to get fed, everyone to be good. Maybe there's some sort of a table, right? So maybe we'll do like four chairs here. We'll move this one in one. We'll have like, we'll give them a little table, right? That seems like it's uh, almost even. <laughs> but we'll give them a little table and we'll put that like this. So we've got a pressure plate. But then there's just a little uh, table set here. I think I'm gonna change this to be mangrove. So let's go grab some mangrove. Remove the bamboo. I think this will look really good. So then we'll add chairs here, like so. Okay, then we've got our fence and we've got our tabletop. Okay, yeah, I like that way more. That looks way better. And then let's see, let's put some shaders on, shall we? Because what a tip that I'll do is whenever I'm trying to figure out where lighting needs to go and I want it to look as cozy as possible, I'll actually turn on shaders. So it shows me where in shaders I need to add our lighting. Let's put them right here. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side where that torch is except further above. And then I'm thinking we do glow bears on either side of that. So like if we make these little like ledges, we could have lanterns on these corner ledges here. So if I do something here as well, but then we've just got a little something up here. I think that would look great. Taking shaders off. Now we're just going to add a bunch of hay bales in here. I think this will really help sell the idea that this is a hay loft. Just adding those in, those hidden barrels and corners here, which I think is kind of a unique touch. Just having it hidden away so that no one can really see it right off the bat, but it's there. So I do like that idea. And then honestly, we could just like hang some from the ceiling as well. That way we have different eyeline levels inside this area. So I actually really like, even just the one hanging, I think adds a lot. And we make our coarse dirt. It makes so much, it's crazy. All right, let's add it into our build and start working on the actual animal layer because I think they'll enjoy that. Right guys? Right. Okay, so inside the stalls, I'm thinking we're mainly going to have a lot of coarse dirt, just so it looks like the animals have actually walked in here, lived in here. And then we're going to add in some hay bales against the walls. I don't want them hopping over into each other's fences. And then we're also going to add some cauldrons so that they can have a little water trough to drink from. And I think this is good. We're also going to continue and have a lot of coarse dirt out in this entryway so that once again, it does look like it's been a more traveled, like tromped on, stomped on type of a feel to it because we have lots of animals coming in and out of here. So we're just going to replace a lot of this and then we'll also add in some of the rooted dirt as well. But I think this is just gonna make it look so much better. Just a little path around the outside just throw some in and we'll kind of fill it in where we need to replace some spots but i think we're just gonna get the basics down okay and already i like that way more and then we're just gonna continue adding all of the coarse dirt into the barn areas I think it'll look really great. And then same with these other ones. We're just repeating the same pattern.
perfect and I think this already looks way better not all of these are gonna have the water troughs in them because I do want to save a little bit of my iron so with our first layer of decorating done it is time to get to the greenery stage And I'm adjusting my roof shape. Another thing that you can do to add texture and dimension to your builds is on the roof, you can actually do something like what I'm doing here, which is every other one, I'm kind of just having the roof components be different levels. And that also will add to your roof shape a lot. I'm not that great at roof shapes, but this is one thing that I've seen a lot of people do is just have different levels on their roof and it just adds a little bit more to it. And I think it looks pretty good. Now let's add those dark oak beams to our ceiling cause it's gonna look really good in here. So we'll get rid of these. Since I changed the roof shape, you can see some of the brown dark oak blocks sticking through. So what I'm thinking of doing is in those spots, we are going to just make those be where our little support beams go. And I think it will cover it quite nicely. So as you can tell, I decided to add some cherry blossoms in between the rafters and beams here just to add some more color pop and I really wanted to add even more of the particle effects and I think it looks pretty cozy in here so far. So we've got some more path blocking and then I decorated the edges similar to how we have around our little pond here on all the sides with the leaves and the azalea bushes mixed in and I want to plant a cherry tree somewhere and I feel like around the side will be the best. I might end up making this like an outside pen and then we can make them like a little lean to. But I feel like for now, just having a tree on the other side will probably be the best. There's not a whole lot of space here. We could maybe stick it like right here where the chests are on this side and then also stick one on this side. But for now, I'm just going to put one over here. And we'll, we don't have bone meal, so we'll uh, wait for him to grow up. Okay, I am grabbing leads to move our little animals here. And then it's time to bring them in and give you the full tour of the space. So I'm going to F3B this so I get the boat. Oh, wait, if I just cl <gasps> I, I didn't know that. If I just from inside the boats, interesting. So from the boat, I just clicked on their leads. Oh, that's so interesting. You don't need to break the boat first. You can just click the lead onto them. Uh, did anyone else know that? Let me know in the comments because I was today years old when I realized you could do that, which is honestly really cool because that means I can hand select just this cow and I don't have to deal with the sheep yet. That's really cool, guys. That's very cool. But let's get you guys into your new space. Come this way, I've got the wheat for you, and come on in your new place. All right, you may have some issues. Okay, come here, all the way in. Okay, and then I just click these off, you guys, and then I pick up my leads. <gasps> Yay, we've got our cows inside their pen. And now it's time to go grab our little sheepies, which I'm still so amazed by this boat and lead thing. So click on the lead and click on the lead and they pop out of the boats. Literally the coolest thing. I don't know if that's a new Minecraft thing, but I'm literally just like in shock. Okay, little sheepies, come along. Thank you very much. Close that before they get out. And we breed them up. 
and we get a widow baby. Yay. Okay, so I'm gonna grab our leads quickly so we have all four. Okay, awesome. We are officially done with our barn and let's do a shaders tour. So from our little starter home path, we just walk all the way over here. We're gonna add more coarse dirt once we go find more gravel, but we just walk up to this and I think it looks so cool. I'll do some free cam so you can see more of the roof shape, but we kept the Japanese style. I did the every other on the rooftop trim just to kind of create some texture but we kept our classic japanese slanted roof there oh <laughs> look at them that is so funny i love it and then we just have lots of leaves we've got vines i use trap doors on all of the pillars according to what the block type we have from the front lots of glowberries the pots we've got the hanging lantern and from the other side we've just got a similar type of a vibe now as we walk inside like you saw we've got our cows we've got some other rooms for some other animals and what's nice is i can just open up these middle dividers if we want more space like what i did for our sheep and cows but if we go up our stairs we have the hayloft area and i think this looks so cool we've got some hanging hay bales we've got some just stacked up in corners We've got lots of storage with barrels and with chests. There's a little meeting area so people can kind of just hang out as they're waiting for the animals. We've got lots of particles in here with a spore blossom giving us the green particles. And then I added in the cherry blossom leaves so we'd have the pink particles as well. And I think this is really cool. I kind of uh, hid crafting tables. I decided to leave this one here. I'm probably gonna remove this one. But this is what we got for our upstairs. I might add some carpets down here, some like mossy green carpets I think will look really nice. But this is what our little animal barn looks like and I love it so much. It's so cozy on the interior and on the exterior. Now the next thing we're going to do is name our parrot from the comments that you guys left on our last episode. First things first, we need to make an anvil because we have not made one yet until today's episode episode when we finally had enough iron from being in those mines and the caves. So now we'll make ourselves an anvil and we're going to put the anvil right here. Grab a name tag and there we go. We have our little parrot Sora, which means sky in Japanese. So thank you to Demigodex and Akumu Rin for that name suggestion. I think having our parrot named a Japanese name works so great for our Japanese themed area. So everybody meet Sora or sky. Now today we are finally going to be working in this room, transforming it into to our enchanting room and a cute little cozy library. So this means we need to be working to get bookshelves, which means collecting leather and sugar cane. And then finally, because we need levels to enchant our armor, we're going into the nether to quartz collect. Now, before we go into the nether, before we do anything too crazy, I've been breeding up quite a bit of cows. And before we can go into the nether, we're going to collect a bunch of leather from these guys. So let's see how much we can collect. Also, guys, uh, I'm, I'm sorry in advance. Close your eyes, children. Don't watch this. I'm sorry, cows. I am desperate. Well, I just broke my axe, which means there's only one thing left to do. I sorry, I sorry, I sorry, I sorry. Thank you. Let me just get rid of all this evidence. Okay, with 26 leather and 50 meat, I'll be good on food for a bit, which is great. I also was uh, just tapping a few cows, so we do have 30 and 58, which is great. All right, so we have a bunch of sugar cane, so we're just going to convert this into paper, into bookshelves, 30 bucks. Let's see what we can get out of this. So we'll take our jungle planks and use those. Bookshelves, we get 10, which is pretty good. Upstairs here, I think, because this side has the most room. This is gonna be where we put the enchanting table set up and make that side of things on the other side of our little upstairs area. I think I wanna put like a little library seating nook. I think that would be really cool. 
So that's kind of what I'm envisioning for splitting this place up as. So guys, let's get into transforming this room into a cozy, enchanting room and library. Okay, so now with our floor done, I wanted to come in here with the bamboo trap doors and add them to these sides right here so that it feels more like the balcony is a little bit more sectioned off and kind of separated from the rest of the building. And then there's just a little nook back here, which I think is kind of fun and cozy too. And our bookshelves would come around here. I'm curious if I can just set up the bookshelves kind of like this or if I'll have to cut in so this is kind of what I'm thinking for the enchanting setup. And then we can have the grindstone, a little barrel, and some other things here that we can just keep supplies for our enchanting setup. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually grab our bookshelves. And another thing I realized, guys, I only have three diamonds. And since I need obsidian, I need to use this first to make a diamond pickaxe. And this is the first diamond pick of this world, which is super exciting. But we need to go mine some obsidian because otherwise I, uh, well, I, I can't even make the enchanting table, so priorities. For now though, it's gonna stay up in our inventory here and I'm gonna use these bookshelves to lay them out where they're supposed to go and then we'll see from there where uh, we need to place them once we actually get the enchanting table all set up. And then uh, we need, do need to have a space in between, so I'm gonna go like this with the books. Something a little bit like this, like that, and then we'll place them here and move the torch and place it like this and we'll put our torch back. So we're gonna start with this. I need five more bookshelves to round this out, but for now, that's, oop, that's our start. Now for the living room side of things, I'm deciding between different palettes of what I want our little living room to be. So what I'm gonna do is kind of lay out these different stairs as what our couches would be like. And then we kind of get to decide what shape we want it to be. So this is a great way to trial and error. And uh, I mean, against this wall, our couch basically blends in. So the bamboo stairs are a no-go. So then we'll just try something different. We'll see if we like the mangrove better, which I feel like I'm gonna like the most just because the walls are bamboo, the floors are dark oak. So I think mangrove is going to be our winner. But you know, I'm, I will always stay a little open-minded. Let's lay down our dark oak just to decide. But I feel like since it will blend in with the floors, this will definitely be the one to go with. We're using mangrove because that's the aesthetic that I have so far and I'm rolling with it. Now for over here, I'm also going to fill in this wall section as well. Same on the other side. So I am going to fill this in totally like that so that both of these are matching. And on this side, I'm just actually going to use the trap doors to kind of just hide things away for us. And we'll maybe just leave the top free because then we can at least see it, but the side is a little bit more blended in. Now the other thing that was bothering me is we have the walls as our bamboo planks and this wall is also a bamboo plank. However, we have these three blocks as part of our roof. So what we're going to do is actually use the trap doors to kind of just disguise it and it kind of just stays in line with this layer of trap doors as well. And it gives a little bit of the colored accent which pulls this in really nicely. So we're just going to grab some more of these blocks so that we can make more of the trap doors, except I'm uh, once again running low on bamboo, which is just another reason and reminder that I really need to make a bamboo farm. And the last two trap doors to fill this in, and I think this looks really good like this. The next important thing is coziness, particles, and the cute little vibes of vines some azaleas so we can plant some little flowered pots upstairs and we also need some carpet to make it cozy and we've got these two glowberries lit up as well and i think this is looking good so far i really like it now i'm getting hungry so we're gonna take some of the steaks that we've been cooking up from all of our little cow slicing we had to do for our bookshelves but it is time to go breed up some more of our cows and get more leather. So let's go do that real quickly. Hi cows, how are you? I'm going to breed you up again 
and then kill you again and I'm very sorry. This is how you you upgrade in Minecraft, okay? And then we just kill more of you, which I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. I, I It's for the bookshelves. It's for the advancement of our base area. Surely you can understand this. And with 15 more leather, I think we'll have enough for all 15 bookshelves. And now we're gonna see about some more bookshelves. We'll make books. And then we should be able to make oh, exactly five more bookshelves. Oh my gosh, we have the perfect number. Okay, let's set this up. We'll have some of this hidden. It'll be fine. We'll move the pot, put that there, and yeah, we'll we'll see how this works. Now it's time to firstly sleep because it's nighttime. And then we're gonna go looking for some obsidian and then go find some more diamonds so we can make an enchanting table. Now, eventually I wanna have a nether portal over in this area and I did happen to see while I was looking around here that there is a lava pool over in this area. So we're going to do the very cringy thing for all speedrunners and uh, kind of get rid of some of this. So sorry to the speedrunners. I'm very sorry, but I also, this is how I need my obsidian. Okay, and we have a 30 obsidian because not only did I want to make our enchanting table I also wanted to have enough so that we could set up another portal and just be able to go right into the nether Once we're ready to go quartz XP hunting and now it's time to go back to our base area and make an enchanting table man The beginnings of Minecraft are just so much fun like I am excited and I just got obsidian like that's not that exciting but in the beginnings of Minecraft, everything's a little bit more exciting and new and fresh. So I really love starting a new series because of that exact reason. Well, let's see, we also need a diamond. So I think we're gonna go back into that mine shaft and go mine up one of those diamond patches so that we can have a diamond because I realized I, I do need that to make the enchanting table. So for now, we'll leave our obsidian in here and we're gonna go back down into our lush cave area and that mine shaft to get those diamonds. Oh my gosh, look at the axolotls, okay. I'm definitely grabbing ourselves an axolotl while we're down here, and we're adding them into that heart-shaped pond we have. Hello, guys. <gasps> Yay, we got the advancement. The cutest predator. Can't argue with that, can we? And now this little axolotl is gonna be my little safety comfort blanket as we go back into the mine shafts. Hopefully there's no creepers in there, but you know, with my luck, who really knows? All right. So, <laughs> we get our one diamond. Let's just mine out around these guys real quick. Watching the right side of my screen. Okay, I have three diamonds, so we're good. We can go back up to the surface. And we still got our little friend to keep us safe, our little security blanket pet. And you know the drill, guys. Since we have a yellow axolotl pet, I need a name for them. So uh, let me know in the comments what we should name our new little friend here. Now, I thought about putting our little axolotl friend inside our pond, but I don't want to have them despawn in case that's a thing. So once you guys give me some name suggestions for our yellow axolotl and I name tag them, we'll put them in their lovely little axolotl pond and then they will be safe. Now we have obsidian and diamonds. It's time to visit our poor little cows again. I sorry, I sorry, I sorry. I sorry. Now let's see if we have enough to make the books. Oh, six books. Okay, that's perfect. And here's the enchanting table. Yay! Okay, let's go put it in place. Now, as exciting as having an enchanting table is, it does also mean that we are just one project closer, one task closer to needing to go to the nether, and I'm not too excited about that. But I am curious where 
our nether spawn will be. In the comments below, let me know what your initial thought is, and then uh, once we're actually there, let me know if you were right. Ta-da! We have our enchanting setup, and in shaders, here we go, our enchanting setup. And we need to bring our lapis up here, and then we're gonna check what we can get for our levels. But I will say, this looks pretty nice and cozy in here. I really like our little living room spot with our shelves, and I just think this is great. And let's see what we can get on the enchanting table. We are at level 30, so that's awesome. Well, we're at 25 levels right now, which does mean it is uh, time for me to not procrastinate any longer and, uh, well, go to the nether. So let's go grab our flint and steel and our obsidian and go set up a portal. All right, now as far as where the nether portal will be set up, I wanna have it be on this little island right here. So if I go into free cam, it's going to have a bridge connecting from our main little island piece here all the way over to this section here. And I think it'll look really cool to have it just positioned right here. So I'm just gonna go and set it up. We're gonna get rid of all of these trees. Since we are going to be working on building up the portal in a future episode, I just want a clearing because, well, frankly, there's so many creepers and skeletons that hide in the, the bamboo forest. So I just wanna be able to see around me a little bit easier. So on that note, let's go and clear out all these trees and set up this portal next. This area is cleared out. I'm gonna guess the biome that we end up in is probably gonna be crimson. I have no idea, but we'll see if I'm right and we can see if you're right. Now, even though we're gonna make a portal much prettier, I'm actually gonna make a more like circular shape, which we're making the actual pretty nether portal in the next episode. So you'll get to see what I'm creating in that one. But for now, we're just gonna make the classic box one and leave it at that. So one, two, three, three, four, and then we'll do that. Then we do one, two, three. Oh, well, I guess this is already more than it needs to be, but we'll call it good. And all right. Oh gosh, I'm so nervous. Okay, let's see where we end up. Where are we? Oh my gosh, I was right, and I'm very scared that I was right. Help. I'm kind of scared. I didn't want crimson, but I feel like it's just so common for crimson to end up being what someone gets that I was just like, you know, we're probably gonna get this. Okay, let's look what we have, shall we? So it looks like we've got nothing but crimson in this direction all the way and we've got basalt and looks like there's some soul sand more basalt okay yep soul sand basalt and crimson those are the biomes around us i have to admit it's not the best spawn but you know it's what we got and uh we can make it safer over time and make it cozy so it, it'll be fine i i hope so now, what I'm gonna do first is get a screenshot of where these cords are. So if for some reason you wanna have the exact same crimson forest spawn as me, those are the cords, you can pause the video if you wanna keep those. But if you don't, don't go where I am because uh, you end up here. So we're just gonna go over here. I'm curious if I can see anything else, like maybe find anything good but I mean there's the quartz right here so I guess before we explore too much like we came in here for quartz right so that is what we should be aiming for first so let's get our XP in the form of quartz and so we began mining up all of the quartz we could find along the way, except being in a crimson biome made it actually a lot harder than I realized because most of the blocks are the crimson blocks and most of the time you can find a lot more quartz in another waste, but I was literally just surrounded by crimson. But we finally found our little patches here and there, constantly looking for hoglins, but we made it work. After a while, we finally broke through our last iron pickaxe and had to resort to using our diamond one for the rest of our mining time. Uh, 
Okay, everyone, we located a fortress and it's literally in a lava lake, but I'm gonna, you know, still screenshot this because it's good to know. So right now my cords are pointing towards this. We have to go north to get there, but I think we're gonna need to make friends with the strider in order to make that a little easier. But now I am curious if I can try to make it up somewhere so that I can see a little bit more clearly what this place is about. So let's try to go through here. Wow, that is a tall fortress. Yeah, I, that'll be fun. Oh, and warped. Oh, that's so good. I was wondering if I would ever see warped. Oh, that's good to know, except it's on the other side of the lava lake as well. So that's super fun. Well, we know where we have a fortress, which is good. I'm not gonna try to go there today because that is not my main goal for today. My main goal is quartz. After we wrote down the quartz to that fortress so we could go back later on, we continue just mining up quartz, trying to get our levels up as high as we can without dying and running into some hoglins before we went back to the overworld. Once we hit 35 levels, we went a little bit further until we hit 36, and then we decided that this was probably enough, and then grabbed some crimson wood on our way back to our portal. Okay, I am going home so far. We've been safe this whole time, and I haven't had to deal with any of the bad dudes actually getting me, like, hurt. So I'm gonna take that as a win and go home with my 36 levels, do some enchanting before the hoglins get me. Ah, <sighs> feels good to be back, oh my goodness. But let's see what we can get with 36 levels. I'm really hoping we can get a good enchant for the pickaxe because if we can get fortune three, we can go back and get the rest of those diamonds and that would be amazing. So we've got our lapis. Okay, lapis and pickaxe. Unbreaking three, please have fortune three on it. Just unbreaking three. Well, I wonder if I reroll what I would get. We're gonna try. Efficiency four? I like that. Oh, I'm just getting efficiency four. <laughs> okay, we're gonna try our pickaxe one more time, okay? One more time for our pickaxe. We're gonna see if we get something better. I'm breaking three again. Please give me something more than just, just unbreaking. If it's unbreaking again, I'm, it's a sign and we're just gonna leave it for now and when we have a better XP source. <gasps> fortune two, okay, it's not fortune three, so I don't need to get super excited, but I was just getting efficiency four and I was just getting unbreaking three. So having those plus fortune two, I'll take. Next, we enchanted our leggings and our chest plate. Even though they weren't level 30 enchants, it was better than nothing. And then we enchanted our helmet. Beggars can't be choosers in the early game, okay guys? I could wait, I could go back to the nether, but my spawn in the nether is scary as heck. So we're just gonna leave it for now. You know, I'll take respiration one to start, proc one, unbreaking two, unbreaking two, and we don't have anything on here, so let's just see if cycling it helped blast or unbreaking. We'll just do unbreaking. But for now, I will take what we can get. I am very happy with our pickaxe for now. Fortune 2 isn't exactly the best of the best, but I, you know, it's better than nothing and I will gladly take it. Next, I wanna work on something a little bit cozier and it involves this guy. So what I wanna do is I'm actually going to work on creating an axolotl pond for our little friend here. And I think it'll be a really nice little spot for them. Oop, it's night. But what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use all of the blocks that we got in that lush cave over there. And we're gonna convert this into a really cozy spot for our little axolotl friend. And in the next episode, when you guys give me some name suggestions for our yellow axolotl, we'll put him in there with their little name tag. But I'm gonna sleep first before we get started on this. Okay, I've got some building blocks for our little pond here. We're gonna use mostly moss blocks to cover the bottom and the edges to make it all green because right now it's just dirt on the edges and it doesn't look nice and I guess we have to fix the water itself. And then I've got bone meal, which we're going to use to add more seagrass to the bottom of the floor, and then adding in some of the moss blocks along the edges will allow me to be able to place the small drip leaf and the big drip leaf, 
And then I'm going to hide a spore blossom kind of under a block, like probably like kind of like this, just so that this has some particles as well in here. And then we're going to add some blocks of amethyst into here to make it more magical and some azalea leaves and glow berries. So now that you know what we're doing, let's get into it. All right, I need to grab more moss, so we're going into our lush cave, but I'm gonna first make us a little hoe so that we can pick it up a lot easier. So we're just grabbing two, we've got sticks on us, so then we've got our little hoe, and I think I wanna pick up more amethyst blocks because I think that will look super pretty in there. And I'm bringing an extra bucket of water in case we find another axolotl. But you're probably thinking, Red, we've seen you in that lush cave a lot, and you're right. So I'm just gonna cut out most of that part and collect the resources off camera and meet you back here. Unless we find an axolotl, then obviously I'm gonna show you our new pet friend, and then you can give them a name too. Okay, I found a white axolotl, so we're taking this little friend with us, and then we're gonna collect our moss. Hi friend. All right guys, you know the drill. We have a yellow axolotl to name and now a white axolotl to name. Then I saw a cave attached to the geode, so I went to go explore. And as I was exploring, I kept hearing a bunch of skeleton noises and I wasn't sure where they were coming from. So I started digging around, poking different holes, trying to find where these could be coming from because I was pretty sure I was hearing a skeleton spawner. So I kept digging different patches and just as I was about to give up, I dug into one specific section and as I got down further, I heard more and more skeletons and it kept getting louder. So I was pretty sure. And then sure enough, I found it. So then I very carefully examined the situation, dug around the outside of it, poked a little hole, and then ended up having the skeletons start shooting each other. So they ended up actually uh, taking each other out. So I had way less to deal with on the inside, which was concerning for me. So it made it a whole lot easier. Once the skeletons finished taking each other out, I just had a few to take care of, and then we were able to go inside and check the chests. And the chests gave us a saddle, a golden apple, and some iron and some redstone. So I grabbed the screenshots so that we could come back to this later on for a future episode. Then it was back to the top to continue decorating our pond. All right, the pond is done. And I just placed lily pads, the big drip leaf and small drip leaf around. We even placed some glow berries to light it up. And there's also some amethyst around on the ground. So I'll go into free cam so you can see a little bit better here. I'll back it up. But we've just got patches of amethyst kind of lining different areas. The ground is all seagrass now because I used bone meal. And I think it looks pretty cool. It's not like a crazy, over-the-top decorated pond, but it's just a little something to make it look better, and I think this is great, and I think our axolotls are gonna love this. Now, the next thing I wanna show you guys is actually a surprise for you guys. We have a new skin for the series, and I'm super excited to show you guys, so let me go put that skin on and show you our skin for the series. Okay, and here is our skin, guys. We've got a little green kimono. We've got the cute little toes all oh, looking good. We've got the cute little shoes to match it, and I think it's super fun. The hair on the back, I think, looks so cool as well. We've just got a little chopstick in our hair and a little golden hair tie at the end of our braid. And then we've just got our golden belt that we're wearing. But this is the skin that we have for the series, and I know it does look a little bit different on my 
my face. I wanted to have a refreshed skin since I've had that one for a very long time, so I hope that even though it does make me look a little bit different, you guys are excited for the upgraded skin that I commissioned and are excited that we have a little kimono to match our Japanese-inspired face area and honestly, the shoes. The shoes are my fave. They're so cute. And I love how we kind of have these little like floral kind of glow berries on our skin as well. I think it's pretty great. And my offhand just looks so cute as well with the little flowers there. And I am very happy with this skin. So thank you to Banana Blocks on Twitter for making this skin commission for me. But since I don't want to die, we're, we're putting our armor uh, back on. So now this is what our skin looks like with our armor. And I still think it looks pretty good. You know, we still get our cute little arms and I think it's great. Now the next thing I want to do is actually add in some of of those Tori gates that you see over nearby shrines and different areas that are just a really nice Japanese gateway and I want to place three in our area, two of them by our nether portal. So showing you where the nether portal ones are going to go, we're going to use the uh, Tori gates as a kind of bridge entrance. So there's going to be a Tori gate on this side of the river and you can see it placed blocks on that side of the river as well. Now showing you what I have on the other side, I'm thinking that the Tori gate will probably come like back to here. Our bridge will stop somewhere around here and then we'll have our path kind of arch our way up and come from this angle. And this is actually going to be the direction which our portal's gonna be because it's gonna be a big circle. So I wanna have this be the direction that it's coming from. So we're going to kind of pivot the portal position so that we're entering it from this way instead of from the direction we did set it up as. But once we have these two gates set up, I do think that I wanna have the gates be red. Now, whether that's going to be on the nether side of it with a Tori gate or on this side of it, red in Japanese culture actually symbolizes protection against evil. And uh, well, since we have our nether portal, it just seemed fitting. And uh, I mean, having a bridge will also be nice. So I figured the Tori gates being incorporated into our bridge is going to be a really nice addition to this area and just, well, make travel a lot easier. The other Tori gate I wanna set up is going to be in between our starter base and our animal barn. So I'm going to place a Tori gate here as well, cause I think it'll just allow us to kind of have an entryway if we wanna add another barn, some crop fields, kind of having this be like the farmland district was kind of my thought for that. So these are the three places we're gonna add those Tori gates. So let's get started. Of our Tory gates are done. I think this adds so much to our area. So this is kind of our entrance into the animal and farming area and district of our base. And I think this is just so cool. I love having these arches now. I think it fits so great. And you can see the two behind me for our nether portal, which putting the bridge in there is gonna make it look so good. Let me show you. So as we just come a little bit closer here, here is where our bridge is going to be in between these two Tory gates. And this is just gonna look so cool as a bridge. If I go into free cam, just picture a really cool looking bridge that just goes in between these two. It's gonna look so cool when we're done. And then we'll have a nice little path leading up to our portal. But I think this just adds so much to our area. If I just zoom out, having these three little Tory gates just fits so well. I'm so happy I decided to add these. Now, despite it being a rainy day, I want to work on our nether portal over there and turn it into something that's a lot prettier than what it is. I really shouldn't be too surprised that there's so much rain here. We literally live in the rainforest. We're in the jungle, but alas, 
We, we, we will deal with it. Now for today, I am going to work on creating the beautiful nether portal, which the path is gonna come right up here and we'll walk inside our nether portal here. We're gonna make it kind of like a half circle shape. And then we're also going to be building up the bridge that will go in between these two. And I can't wait because it's gonna look so pretty. But once again, I am iron poor and diamond poor. And because we now have fortune two, we're gonna start out with some mining because that's what you do in the early game before you have an iron farm. And honestly, a rainy Minecraft day is the perfect day to go into the mines and the caves to do some mining. And I just slept through the night and of course the rain goes away. Oh, and look, it's a rainbow. Oh my goodness. I haven't seen a rainbow yet in our world. It's so pretty. Oh, I love it. And now we work our way through the jungle of bamboo and into our cave system. Let's get some iron and some diamonds. Started by mining up some iron. Mined up our first diamond, and it literally was one diamond. Mined up our second diamond, and this one actually ended giving us three diamonds, which made up for the last one. Attempted to collect some glow ink, however, I, I failed miserably, and I eventually just had to turn on hitboxes so I could actually get the dang thing. Grabbed more iron, whacked this creeper's toes as he was hiding a chest that I wanted to inspect. Finally took him out and looked in the chest and there wasn't a whole lot, but I took the torches, glowberries, iron, and the coal. Smacked another creeper as he was also waiting for me around the corner. Collected up some more iron. Grabbed some lapis so we could add that to our enchanting room. And we found even more lapis. Now, as I was leaving the cave tunnel I was in, I started hearing a bunch of spiders and I went to investigate it and I realized it was actually a spider spawner, which we've never had one in our world before. Uh, hi there, guys. What the heck? Nope, stay back, stay back. I have not seen one of these in a long time. Hi. A spider spawner? Right in here, guys. What the heck? So now we have a skelly and a spider spawner. That's pretty nice. You know, I do need levels and I did want some way. Let's check our chests first. <gasps> Two name tags, that's great for our parrots. Oh my gosh, and a bucket, yay. And let's check this one. Bones and a name tag, let's go. Oh my gosh, three, that's amazing. I, I'm, I'm happy. Hey dude, how's it going? Well, I gotta be honest, I only really wanted to find uh, diamonds. And so far I only found four from mining up those two veins and I was gonna go a bit deeper, but for now I think what I wanna do is actually try to use this spider spawner to get a bunch of spiders and XP levels so that I can make a, another diamond pick and hopefully get silk touch. So I'm just gonna like makeshift close this off and just leave enough space so that I can get to the little spider guys and we'll call it good. Then I crafted up some fences so that I could separate me and the spiders and started creating a little uh, section to smack them around. Took away the last torch so that they would start spawning. Now I'm gonna sit here and try to collect some XP orbs and I'll come back with you once I have enough levels. I decided to turn on shaders since it actually brightens up the room with the shader settings I have. Dug underneath where I was standing so that I could actually collect the XP orbs that were getting stuck and just spent some time slicing and dicing. Decided to craft up a sword instead of using my ax. Then I decided to lower the ceiling so that the spiders can't crawl up as high and it would allow them to see me a lot easier and quicker. And then I let my updated room go to work. I also added water so that it would siphon them towards me. This would make it a lot easier for me to collect everything. Okay, we now have 34 levels, which I feel like is enough so we can create a new pick and hopefully get some good enchants on it. Ooh, and I'm seeing more axolotls. Ooh, I want the pink one. I want the bright ones first. We're gonna collect all of them, but I want a pink one. Hi, you. <gasps> Yay, okay. <laughs> now we've got yellow, 
white and now pink which actually matches the bucket so let me know your name suggestions for our new pink axolotl now i was able to collect up a ton of string which is great because i live in a bamboo jungle but i wasn't really using much scaffolding because i didn't have string and now i have 33 string and i have a bunch of white wool to build with which is just great so we are in a good place now with our string. We can make all of the scaffolding to help us with building. It's going to be great. Okay, and making a brand new diamond pickaxe. And we still have one diamond left, so we could make a shovel. Or we could save that for some more armor. And let's go see what we can get on the enchanting table with our new... Actually, I had lapis there. With our new pickaxe. All right, let's see what we can get. Efficiency four. So my other one is efficiency four on breaking three fortune two. I'd love to get silk touch. I know it's super rare. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try rerolling. We're gonna see if we can get more than just the efficiency. Okay, so we're at thirty one. Let's try again one more time. I need to break some lapis out of the block so that it actually goes in there. Diamond pickaxe, unbreaking three, drum roll. <gasps> no way! I just asked for silk touch and I got it! Ah! Sorry, headphone warning. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry for your ears. So sorry, but that is literally what I was asking for. Oh my gosh, okay. I'm excited. Unbreaking three, efficiency four, and silk touch. And now we have efficiency four, unbreaking, and fortune two. But this is a huge win. The next thing that we're gonna be working on is collecting up a bunch of supplies because we're gonna get to work making our nether portal. Now I know I said I wanted to make it like a half circle shape. I was in a creative world just like testing building that and I'm changing my mind. I don't want to build a circle in a square game. So we're gonna do something a little different. Now, I decided to make things hard for myself, and I need wheat because we're going to be building out of mud bricks partially, so not only am I going to need some extra adventuring supplies because I'm going to go find villagers, and I'm just going to raid all their hay bales, but we then need to get a bunch of dirt as well, so that'll be a fun little project. Besides that, we're going to be using a lot of the blocks we already have collected. We're going to be using bamboo, and we're going to be using mangrove, the stripped mangrove, we're gonna be using a dark oak in the stripped form and that's pretty much it then we're gonna mix in some of the trap doors and the slabs it's gonna look pretty cool but since we have to go on an adventure I need to make sure that we're stocked up so I've got enough steak we've got our diamond tools we've got extra pickaxes and extra axe We've got shears, we've got a boat, we've got a bed, and I think we're ready to go looking for more villages. I am actually very curious to explore around our area even more to see what we can find. So even though this is going to be a tedious task to go collect a bunch of hay bales, I love a good adventure. This one just uh, happens to start when it's raining again. So as far as villages, I know there's a village over that way because I've traveled that way. I've gone a little bit in this direction because our swamp and mangrove and dark oak are over there, but I haven't actually gone this way. So I think we're gonna go east for a while and we're gonna see where east takes us. So now we're off on our adventure, eastward. Ooh, actually, I'm already turning around to go home because we're gonna be traveling through the water and we're probably gonna come across some warm ocean biomes and I wanna bring my archeology span brush in case we find suspicious sand or suspicious gravel. Okay, archeology span brush. Now I'm ready for an adventure. <gasps> Ooh, here we go. Are we in a warm ocean? Warm ocean, oh my gosh. Okay, guys, this could be our chance for a sniffer. I'm just gonna say it. Okay, this is great news. We're gonna build us a crafting table quickly. Okay, this is great. I'm gonna get a little bit closer and put my shield in my offhand in case there's the trident dudes. Let's see if we can get ourselves. We're gonna make a door really quickly. Let's look for some suspicious sand. Oh, this is so exciting. This is the first time I've like looked for these. Oh, I can't wait if I happen to even see any. <gasps> Ooh, here's one, okay, perfect. Okay, <gasps> okay, first. 
Oh, that's a rip. Okay, yeah. Take the door. That was a rip. Oh, and I'm getting attacked. Get out of here. I can't believe I just did that. Take two. Right click red. Right click. Right click. Hey, you. I'm trying to do some investigating. Excuse you. Okay. Right click. No shot. This is a sniffer egg? <gasps> oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Get out of here. Ah, oh my gosh. I've got a sniffer egg. <gasps> Where's my boat? Where's my boat? Okay. Ooh, okay. Ah, you're ruining the moment, drowned. Guys, oh my gosh, we found a sniffer egg. And we got the advancement. I'm so glad I brought my brush and went back for it. Oh my gosh. Oh guys, I'm like so glad that there ended up being a sniffer egg in that one because I definitely was so sad that I accidentally broke that piece. Oh, that makes me feel so happy that we actually found one. Oh my goodness. Look at that in our inventory. Oh, I love it. Found some more sasan and made sure to right click to dust and it ended up being a wooden hoe. Checked the chest and found a fishing rod, some wheat and some coal, so grab that. Found another sasan and dusted that and it was only a gold nugget. Dusted the one next to it and we got coal. Found another suspicious sand and it was once again a wooden hoe. Found a map inside another chest, followed the map and checked the chest and took pretty much everything except fish. Kept adventuring until we found a ship. Inside one of the chests was two more of the coast armor trims. Scaled a mountain to check this nether portal chest that was next to the ship. Grabbed two golden apples from the chest and we swapped out our helmet for their gold one since it had a higher respiration on it. Had some fun yeeting myself off the cliff towards the ocean. Discovered more ruins in the ocean and went to go dust for the sus gravel, which it gave us an iron hoe. Checked the chest, which had a treasure map, so then we went and followed that to the island. Ooh, we're getting the buried treasure and drowned ruins and a ship on this one. Hello, what an island. Okay, let's uh, definitely check this out. Once we found the spot, we went to 9-9, opened up the chest, and it had a bunch of goodies. So we grabbed the TNT, the diamond, the iron, and the gold, as well as the emeralds. Now, let's go see about these drowned ruins. Okay, suspicious sand. Ooh, right here. Okay, right click. Oh, pottery shards. Oh my gosh. I need like a backpack in this game or something. <gasps> Respect the remains. Oh, we got our first pottery shard. <gasps> Explorer pottery shard. Oh, that's so cool. This is so fun. We're getting the pottery shards, smithing templates, and we got a sniffer egg. This is a good adventure, and I'm literally adventuring for wheat. That's all I'm looking for. Villages to take their wheat. Just by looting the little drowned ruins, I'm finding wheat anyways. So this, this is a, a very successful adventure. Started brushing some sus gravel and found another pottery shard. While dusting in underwater sus gravel, I had a bunch of drowned following me, making it harder to actually pick up the shard, but I finally got it. Dusted another sus gravel, but it was just wheat. The next one we dusted for gave us another pottery shard, the blade pottery shard to be exact. Checked the sunken ship for chests and grabbed the iron and the emeralds. The other chest had a map which led back to the same chest we already dug up. With an overflowing inventory, I decided to make a chest boat. Since we were just traveling via water the entire way, I wasn't concerned. Then we continued on our way and came across our first village. So we grabbed all of their hay bales, took a screenshot of their cords, and continued going up along the coast until we saw another village really close by. As we approached the village, I realized there was a blacksmith, which was super great, and then we started decimating all of their hay bales. Came across these villagers stuck in a cow pen. I don't know how these guys get there, but they get there, so I let everyone free, and then grabbed more hay bales. Picked some flowers. Continued on our way to find another ruin, but we were interrupted by some trident boys, so I just noped my way out of there. 
found another sunken ship, so we checked the first chest for some goodies, and so we grabbed the treasure map, went looking for the second chest, which didn't have anything I wanted, so we just left. As it was getting to be nighttime, I spotted a another village in the distance dead ahead. So I took a quick nap so that land would not be scary for me, and the next morning we made our way over to the village. So we first checked inside some houses, started collecting hay bales, and more hay bales, and more hay bales. And I'm sorry dude, I'm taking your job. All right, and put our goodies back inside the boat. Honestly, I feel like us having 64 and seven of hay bales is good enough. So let's go home with our loot because we got a lot of stuff, guys. We got smithing templates, we got a sniffer egg, we've got some pottery shards, diamonds, we've got hearts of the sea, golden apples, lots of goodies and I don't want to lose them. So we're gonna go home now. Okay, we are back in our area. We are back by our bamboo area. We basically just went in a big circle all the way back here to get back home. And I'm okay with that because it brought us back here and we still have all of our goodies. And next, what we're going to do is I'm going to create an outline of where our build is going to be. We are going to be building a nether portal pagoda room and we're gonna have two layers and a basement. So the bottom layer when you walk into the build is gonna kind of be just like a serene zen room. The second layer is where we're going to put our nether portal and the basement will be where we keep the nether wart. And storage because, well, my starter storage section is already not enough. So what I'm going to do is map out where we're going to put this build. And if our path is coming from right here, this is going to be what we walk up into, but I want it to be set a little bit further back. In free cam, you can see that we're just going to create a square like this, but this does seem like it's really just immediately off the path. So I think I'm going to push this back even further and move the pagoda over into this area. So let's remove this dirt, set up the outline, get our mud bricks, and get building this thing.
All right, progress update. This is what we got, guys. I think this turned out so good so far. Obviously, we're not done because our original portal is still on the outside and it's not on the second level. But I think this is super cool. So if we go around the edges, we have these lanterns kind of by the bamboo pillars in between the mangrove all the way around on the outside. On these sides, we just have bamboo trap doors. Kind of just decorating that, allowing there to be some light shining through, but still have it kind of seem like it's blocked off. Some of you in the comments mentioned that I could use the birch trapdoors instead of the bamboo ones, but for me, I think the bamboo fits our theme better since it fits the color scheme a little bit better. And plus, when I tried birch, yeah, it didn't look as good. But I do agree with the people that said the birch trapdoors look like a paper divider, which is pretty classic to a Japanese style, especially in the more minimalistic builds. But for my build style for this series, I think I really like just the bamboo trapdoor. And it's new, so that makes it fun too. But all the way around, it's literally the exact same thing. Lanterns behind the little bamboo sections with the mangrove, and then the little trapdoors. We have the mud brick going all the way around. I will be adding some decorations to the outside outside so it doesn't just look like a plain wall. But for now, this is what the outside looks like. If we go up the stairs, I did use some of those mosaic variants of the bamboo throughout this build. So I used them in here, in this centerpiece as well, and then down the stairs as well. Going up the ladder, this is probably the most simple part of the build since all I really need this room to be is literally for the nether portals. So once we get this all decorated, then we're gonna light these portals. For now, though we're just gonna leave them unlit because frankly having four more portals lit up and making noise is a lot now as we go down the stairs this is our basement level and this is where I want to add in some nether wart I think what I'm going to do is replace the mangrove blocks with the soul sand and we'll have the nether wart growing up here so it kind of looks like their little planter boxes all the way around here but we'll have nether wart in here and of course with our Japanese style we also have a little bit of our seating space down here. And for lighting down here, I think instead of torches or regular lanterns, I wanna use the soul lantern variants because this is the nether room after all. So this is what we have so far and all that's really left to do honestly is a little bit of the more fun decorating bits. So that's what we're gonna work on next. But I did wanna mention that off camera, I went back to the spider farm and I got up enough levels so that I could make a better sword. So I have a sweeping edge three knock back to sharpness four and I'm breaking the three. I did combine two iron swords just because I, uh, well, I kept breaking swords down at the spider farm, trying to get XP and levels. So I figured trying to make one, even if it's iron, would be a good idea. And it's night, so I'm gonna sleep because I am forever terrified that creepers will come and get me. While I was also down in the mines, I was able to find one more little axolotl friend. And now we have a little brown one too, so we need a name for this little friend as well. And I'm gonna pick you up so you, uh, you don't dry out. Okay, and I think what I need to do next is remove this portal and light those ones up there. Grabbing the fence gates to fill that in and some of the bricks as well, just like that. Now we use our flint and steel and let's go light these bad boys up. I'm wearing gold so I am safe, so I don't need to be concerned. But then we've got one, two, three, and four. Perfect. And let's see if we make it back to the correct place. The same portal, we should, it's linked up. Okay, perfect. But I did notice guys that because we have the soul sand over here and I wanna use soul sand torches, you know what that means. We need to go across there to get the soul sand quickly. And I mean very quickly because I'm scared. But real quick, I think I wanna set up a little chest just so that I can kind of have a little storage spot for things in here. Oh, are they mad at me? I'm opening a chest, do you see me? Were you mad at me? Wait, excuse me? Uh, you're not supposed to be here. <laughs> um, hello? Did that go through my portal? Hello? 
Oh, you did. Get out of here. Oh, did it go back through? We're fighting in the portals. Get out of here. How on earth did that guy get in the nether? What? <laughs> All right, that, that was odd. Let's, let's go back through and get soul sand. So it came through this one block here and I just filled it up so we should be good now, but we need to very carefully uh, make our way to get soul sand. And I'm only a little scared. And I grabbed a mushroom in case I'll need it. But I'm going to just uh, create some lines so that I can know where I'm coming from. Ooh, ooh, that looks like easy access to some bones. That's awesome. Oh, wait, look, guys. Oh, we've got a bastion nearby us. That means we could get some armor trims, maybe. We'll definitely have to check that out. Not today, though. I'm too scared today. But let's grab some soul sand, shall we? And let's grab some of these bone blocks as well. All right, we've got 64 and some in soul sand and 64 and some in soul soil and 24 bone blocks. And I don't want these guys getting closer to me, so we're just gonna leave. And you know, while I'm here, free XP, might as well. everyone our nether pagoda is done and here it is i love this so much i'll go into free cam for you so this is what it looks like we've got our two-tier nether pagoda we've got just our kind of hangout spot and all of our armor that we can grab on the bottom level a little seating area upstairs is where you just climb the ladder and go into the nether and i finished the basement so walking up our path, I just have coarse dirt and the path blocks, a little bit of rooted dirt, I don't have too much, but I used all of the new uh, pottery shards from our adventure earlier today when we were looking for hay bales. And we just walk up into here, and I love this so much. Glow berries to light this up, give it a cozy vibe. We've got some leaves, uh, some chests to store things, and then a central place to sit and take a snooze and just relax. Then if we go up our staircase here, this is where the nether is. And I have used glass to kind of box in all of the sides just to make sure that nothing tries to get out. I did kind of like the idea though of keeping the portal exposed on this side because then it, you can see the portal coming through so you know exactly that this is our nether pagoda. And we can just walk on through all these sides for the most part and at the top here I just put some azalea leaves, a spore blossom, and some of the cherry blossoms to give ultimate particle vibes. Now if we go all the way down to the basement, this is what we got. We still obviously need to go to a fortress and grab some nether wart, so that is going to be placed here once we get to that stage of things. But this is just another seating spot where we can kind of hang out, talk and chat as we wait for all of our nether wart to grow up. We've got some chests as well, and I just decorated with some glow berries, some potted plants, some leaves. We've got soul lanterns down here since we have soul sand and nether wart and nether related things growing in here. 
I think it looks pretty cool. But all in all, I absolutely love this build. I'm so proud of the design. I spent some time in creative trying to figure out the style that I wanted to go with, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I'd say our Dojo Mojo Casa house is a wonderful addition. The final thing I want to do today is name those axolotl from your comments. Now, you guys gave me so many great name suggestions in the comments, I had a hard time choosing, but I've narrowed it down for our white and yellow axolotls. Once I uh, figure out which one was which, because we found two last episode and we found two this episode, I think these are the correct ones. Let's just see. Okay, yellow. Okay. I did guess right. So for our white axolotl, we are going to name them Yuki, which means snow in Japanese. And our yellow axolotl, we're going to name it Niko, which means sunlight or sunshine in Japanese. Now, so many of you in the comments left a note saying that I don't need to use name tags on axolotls, that I can just use the buckets. I did know this was a fact, I just always forget whenever I'm like looking for like name tags or things, but I appreciate you guys making sure I don't waste my precious name tags. And on that note, we are releasing Nico. And we are releasing Yuki, Snow, and Sunshine. Now for today's episode, we are going to build a bridge and get over to our nether pagoda. I also want to go into the nether and explore that bastion that we saw. And I want to make our way over to that nether fortress because I want to collect some blaze rods and nether wart today as well. Now, the other thing I want to do today is actually apply the armor trims we got since we have six of the coast ones. But I want to go to that bastion just in case we find some armor trims in there as well. But for now, we're leaving our armor trims in there since I'm not going to lose them in the nether. Now, Phase one for today is to actually head back over to our jungle temple because I realized I never found the room that has the sticky pistons and I'm gonna use sticky pistons to bridge across that giant lava lake since our fortress is in the middle of that. I'm actually going to grab some soul soil. We're going to grab some quartz as well. We're grabbing some cobblestone. We're gonna grab redstone, grabbing some iron iron as well. Since our fortress was literally in the middle of a lava lake, I figured it would be kind of sneaky and also fun to make a little machine to bridge across the lava for us. Now, since I don't want to lose these items, I'm going to use one of the chests we have in here to store all of our items. Now we're going to go over to that jungle temple we visited and then also we're going to stay up throughout the night to collect some slimes at our swamp. And since it is almost night, I think we're actually going to go to the swamp first. And then after that, we'll try our jungle temple. Now, the nice thing about slime is once they spawn, we can then make it daytime and all the other mobs will burn during the day, but the slime will still stay alive. So I'm going to kind of boat around the perimeter, wait until I see a bunch of slime, and then we're going to go slicing. Yeah. See, I'm not interested in going on this island right now, so we're just gonna wait till the slime spawn so I don't die. A few moments later. I just forgot one very important thing about slimes. The most slimes spawn during a full moon, and that is not a full moon. So I'm gonna sleep to let all these guys burn, and we're gonna check out the jungle temple and wait till we get a full moon, and then we will stay up for the slimes. Back behind our animal barn over this hill is where I'm pretty sure that little jungle temple was, so we're just gonna hop our way, <laughs> slowly but surely, up to that jungle temple. And then we broke our way into the jungle temple. However, we were very careful to make sure there was enough light, blocked up any areas where any more creepers could come through to keep us safe, and just cheesed our way into the area where the chest and the sticky pistons were, and just grabbed all the loot that was in it, even though it wasn't too great. All right, we've got sticky pistons. Next, we need to go on an adventure to a icy biome because I need blue ice but we're dropping our sticky pistons off at home first because I don't want to lose them on our adventure. So uh, yeah, this will take a bit to get home. 
Yep, just grabbing some coal with our fortune too while we're at it. Now the other way we could get blue ice is from a wandering trader. And for whatever reason, none of them have spawned in my area yet. The only wandering traders I've actually seen have been in other biomes and on our adventures when we were just taking leads. So I still really want and hope that a wandering trader will stop by, but I'm not counting on it. But I am counting on having to deal with mobs. What are you running from? Why are you running so quick? Hello? Is it because I had a, an axe on me? I'm sorry. Hello? What? You are a speedy boy. Hello? What are you running from? Can I help you? I have, I have bamboo. <gasps> oh, you're a worried one. <gasps> I need to make you a boat too. Oh my gosh, do they actually run away if you have like weapons? <gasps> no, 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 come here, come here, friend. I'm, I'm safe. <gasps> Look, I have bamboo. Oh, they just run away with you unless you hold bamboo. You know, as an introvert, if, if someone's holding food, I'm likely to come over. If you're not holding food, I'll probably run. So I understand you. All right, make a crafting table so we can make a boat. So we can get this guy in a boat as well. Hey little buddy, hello. Can you just like sit in this boat for me? That would be wonderful. There we go. And quartz, I remember you. Now we continue on homeward bound. All right, we're back home. We're gonna drop off our sticky pistons and then, oh, I left my door open. Hello, no creepers are in here, right? Okay, good. So I'm gonna drop off our stuff. We've got our sticky pistons. I'm just gonna put them here for now and I think we'll be ready to go do some uh, exploring. So I'm gonna grab us a little boat and I think we're ready to go. Now, as far as directions, I think I'm gonna go past our swamp. So what I'm thinking is we're gonna go west and south so we're gonna go southwest in this direction and we'll see what we find and i decided that instead of taking our jungle boat we're gonna take our cherry boat because why not use the new wood updates right found a sunken ship and decided to investigate and check the loop grabbed all the iron and lapis and emeralds next chest had a buried treasure map so we grabbed that and the rest of the contents as we were checking the treasure map we realized we were by an ocean monument found the buried treasure and grabbed all of the loot from the chest. Now I need to stop getting distracted. <laughs> I'm getting so easily distracted now that there's so much more stuff to adventure to go find in Minecraft, but I'm not mad about it. And as we were traveling, we somehow ended up at the village we were at last episode. Found a real nether portal, checked the contents, and there was a golden apple, so we made sure to grab that. So as I've been boating around, trying to find where there's ice spikes, I just remembered that over by spawn, there was a bunch of ice spikes. So I'm gonna head towards spawn and see if I'm correct. Now, as I approach spawn, I do need to be careful that I don't get too close to that zombified village because I don't want them trying to come out in the middle of the day to attack me because I want to save as many as possible and not have them burn during the daylight. So we are just probably going to go up the mountain and around instead of going straight the direction that we should just because I am wanting to save those villagers for a project later on where we can actually transform the entire village and transform them from zombies into regular villagers. And we're collecting up all the petals while we're here because I love that these are a part of Minecraft. And, and they're just cute. How could you not want them? Now, if I'm remembering correctly, I think it was out in this direction on one of these sides. So we're just gonna try for this and see if I was remembering correctly from day one. Hopefully I'm correct. Otherwise, this is just a wild adventure and uh, well, we're not really doing much. <gasps> oh, I was right, yay. Okay, oh, this is so good. Okay, we need blue ice and I think this is the blue ice. So we're gonna go grab that and hopefully not have that little polar bear come at our lives. And there is a second ocean monument over in this area. Good to know. Ooh, ship, ship, we're going to the ship first. Found another sunken ship, so we checked the chest and grabbed the buried treasure map. Checked the other chest, but it didn't have too much that we were interested in, but we did grab the potatoes and the paper and the moss. Third chest had two more coast armor templates, so we grabbed that, the diamond, and the emeralds. 
followed the buried treasure map and located where the chest was and looted the chest. Then it was time to go and collect the blue ice, so we spent some time mining a bunch of that up. Then it was time to head on home. Now as we're making our way back, I thought it would be kind of fun to see what these suspicious so... No. Way. We have a pink sheep in our world? <gasps> Are you kidding? Oh, that's so fun. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Hi, little guy. Hello. <gasps> oh, I, oh, I want to keep you. Hi, buddy. Man, this is a really lucky world. I didn't expect to see this little guy. Well, I guess in the presence of our pink sheep, we're gonna try these different uh, suspicious soups. So let's see what this first one is. Oh, blindness. For like five seconds, wow. Okay, nice. And our second one, let's see what this one is. Oh, poison for 11 seconds. <gasps> oh, both of these are terrible soups. Good thing I didn't feed them to the pink sheep, huh? All right, well, sheep, I will come back for you, but for now, you're going to stay in this boat until I get you. And now we continue on our way home. And home sweet home. Now we unload our goodies and collect all of our stuff to go into the nether and make our lava bridging device. And those extra books that we got from all those sunken ships, I'm just gonna set them into our bookshelves here. These are all empty, but when we want to enchant some books, we can just pull them off the shelves now. All right, now the only thing I'm missing to create our little lava bridger is the slime. And we need to wait until it's nighttime and hopefully a full moon. While we're waiting until we get the full moon from our slimes, we're gonna start making our little bridge here in between our starter house and our pagoda. Enjoy the time lapse. Alrighty guys, our bridge is done. And here's our bridge. I basically just kept our same Tory gates and added the bridge into it, which with the particles from the cherry leaves, I think this looks so magical. So let's just get a closer walk up. I added some mangrove logs with some leaves just to kind of create more of a border. But when we walk up to it, we have our same Tory gate, and then we used our same dark oak, mangrove, and bamboo. I did incorporate some of the mosaic tiles of bamboo with the full blocks, so we have our little waffle top showing through to create some texture on the bamboo portion. I also added some dark oak fence gates in different sections to just break it up, add more contrast because this middle bit is pretty uh, bamboo-y and mangrove-y. I know those aren't words, but I'm making them words. But on the inside, we have our little spore blossom giving us some lovely particles on the bridge, lanterns, glow berries, and vines. I used some trap doors to create some texture on the sides as well. But I just think this is such a cozy little bridge and it makes it way easier to get to our pagoda. Like, way easier. And on the edges, we just added some lily pads and some drip leaf. If I go into free cam for you guys, this is what our bridge looks like from more of an aerial view. You can see all of the lily pads we added. We added some small drip leaf and big drip leaf along the edges on the other side and just covered the top with some azalea leaves 
and I think this looks super cozy. Now, while we were in the process of making this gorgeous little bridge, I would stop and go slime slicing whenever we had a full moon, just to be able to make progress making the bridge, but also getting the slimes collected along the way as well. So we would actually go back and forth between this bridge and making progress on this, and we would do a bunch of slime slicing. Of course, there was a bunch of mobs that tried to attack us, whether it was skeletons or zombies. We even had some children chasing us around and obviously the slime as well. So it was definitely an exciting little adventure. But we now have enough slime to do our slime machine that is our lava bridger. So now it's time to go into the nether. So first things first, put our armor back on. Our boots are about to break. So I think I wanna go to our spider farm real quick, get enough levels to enchant some new boots and then have some of our gear a little bit better than uh, about to break before we make our way to the nether fort now we do have four diamonds, which means we could make some diamond boots. So I think I wanna try to see what that is gonna look like. So we're making diamond boots. Let's see what we can do with lapis. I would love to be able to get feather falling four on these, but we're gonna go to the spider farm to see if we can level this up. Also, my sword is about to die because of using it on all the bamboo around our area. So we also need to have an upgraded sword for our spiders again. So I'm gonna get enough levels to do the boots and the sword enchants. And now that we have our lovely little bridge, we can just walk across the bridge to get us all the way to our spider farm. And until we reach this set, then we're hopping through jungle and dodging bamboo again. And back down we go. Watch me like die one of these times just by like hitting these moss blocks. So actually while I'm thinking of it, we're just gonna get rid of these. Remove the chances that I would end up hurting myself completely. Yep, it's fine. Yep, time to get some levels from ya. If you guys wanna spawn, that would be appreciated. Thank you very much. So I spent the next bit of time just getting my levels up a little bit higher so that I'd be able to enchant the items before going into the nether. Until an uninvited guest stopped by. Well, didn't expect that guy there. I'm just gonna block this up so no one comes in here so I can keep slicing these guys. Then I continued some more slicing. And we're almost 36, there we go. Now that we're at 36 levels, it's time to go back to our starter base and hopefully get some feather falling on our new diamond boots and make a new iron sword because ours is practically dead. Just gonna, oh, what? <gasps> They killed my shoes. <laughs> well, you can see my toes now. That's our cue to go back and enchant those diamond boots now. And for good measure, don't you dare break my boots again, you hear? Good, going up waterfalls. Okay, oh, 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 uh, hi guys. Didn't know you were having a meeting. I'm just gonna walk on past. If I just run past you, will you let me be? Nope. Run. Oh, oh, run. <laughs> run. <laughs> run across the bridge. <laughs> Don't let them get you. <laughs> Look at them coming. Don't mind me. Just escaping death. Yep. Just gonna back away. Yep, see you later. Okay, bye, yep. <laughs> well, that was fun. And you can see his forehead right above me. And since I am without my boots now, since those got broken, since my boots got broken, it's time to go enchant these bad boys. And I was gonna see if I could make a new iron sword. So let's see if we can enchant this as well and get something good for that. Cause this is literally about to break in 19 swats. So hitting those pillagers would have definitely uh, gotten them more than I wanted to get low. Then I spend some time enchanting to see what would I get first if I put the boots in versus the sword. And I decided to put the boots in first since that was my priority. And I ended up liking what I got with proc four and unbreaking three. Next, I enchanted my sword, but we only got knockback two. So I decided that we would try to reroll it and see if we could get something better. And boy, did we. Okay, unbreaking three. Oh, oh my, oh, <gasps> looting three, let's go. I'm about to go look for blazes. Oh my gosh, sharpness four, knockback two, unbreaking three. <gasps> oh, 
Hello? Oh my gosh, this is... This is a great sword! Ho <laughs> ho Now we're ready for the nether. I can't believe I got looting three right before we're about to go into the nether. That's great timing. And uh, honestly, I kind of want to make a fishing rod just because uh, we might come across a strider. And if I have a saddle, yep, I've got a saddle. And I think we have, yes, okay. So we're gonna make one of those little nether wart sticks. There we go, warped fungus on a stick. Because if we find a strider, we can ride them in the nether and I think that'll be a safer way to get around. So we wave goodbye to our starter area for now and we collect up all the items that we'll need to make this thing. I'm also just gonna bring some extra supplies just in case, some extra cobblestone for building. I'm gonna bring the gold as well for trading with the piglins cause I could get fire res, which would make it easier. And then jungle logs. And honestly, I'm, I'm taking more dirt. And we've got a bow just in case with 32 arrows. We have our warp fungus on a stick. All right, let's try this contraption, guys. If I remember correctly, the fortress was like up and over through this way. So if we just try to make our way up here, that's the way to the fortress. However, the bastion was over in this direction. So we're gonna check out the bastion first. So I'm gonna actually keep a lot of these things that are in my inventory back here in our little safety box. Let's go find a Sebastian and see what loot we can find. And so we began bridging our way across the nether, running into scary hoglins in the crimson forest and defending our lives and trying not to die. Outside the bastion, we ran across some piglins, so I thought I would try to trade some gold with them to try to get some fire res or other goodies. However, none of them wanted to pick up the gold. I was very confused. Let me know in the comments uh, if this was just a glitch or if there's a new 1.20 thing going on. Next, we started digging into the bastion and got the advancement. Those were the days as we started just poking our head in to see what we could see in there. I kept hearing piglin brute noises, so I was a little bit concerned that they were really close and could hit me if I wasn't too careful. And then after a few hits, I took them out. Found our first chest, but it was guarded by a piglin brute. So one by one, I sliced this piglin brute until we could open the chest to see what goodies we could find. Upon opening the chest, we received the advancement war pigs, and we also were able to get a golden apple, some iron, bone blocks, magma creams. So we took those goodies. After that, we started going around the bastion, carefully removing blocks to make sure we don't get attacked by piglin brutes, and then we found another chest. Inside this chest, we found the snout banner pattern, which was super exciting. Some more magma creams, gold and iron, so we took those goodies too. Next, I decided to bridge all the way up to the top of the bastion so that I could get a better view of where the piglin brutes are, if I could take them out with my bow, and where I could find my next treasure chests. Found a chest in the center of the room by the nether wart, so started slowly making my way over there, picking off the piglin brutes and the piglins that were getting aggroed on me until I could make it down to the chest. Once by the chest, I boxed myself in with dirt so that none of the piglins would aggro on me, and then we opened up the chest to find that we had some bone blocks, and that was pretty much it. We took the Soul Speed 1 book as well, but nothing much was in here. Bridged our way over to another chest that we saw and boxed up the sides so that the piglins wouldn't be aggroed on us. And then once we finally were safe in the room and when we opened this chest, we found pig step, which was super exciting. And so we grabbed that for sure and also grabbed the magma cream, gold and iron as well. Next, we started towering up so that we could get to the second section of the bastion, which was a much taller space and had more piglin brutes around us. And once we boxed in the whole area, we opened the first chest and we found the snap out armor trim, which was so exciting. And then we grabbed the golden carrots, golden apple, and the magma creams out of the double chest. Opened the second, but there was just some golden carrots and some iron nuggets, so we just took the golden carrots. Well, I certainly didn't expect to find as many cool things as we did. I'm like so surprised. We got the snout armor trim, we got the snout banner pattern, and we got pig step in one place. And I got some nether ward already. We've got magma creams, we've got golden carrots, we even got a sold speed one book. We got a few extra golds, and I mean, golden apples, you know, that's uh, pretty great. And uh, also we need to get rid of this guy. Hi, can you, oh, okay, hi. Okay, didn't realize you could reach me there. That's interesting. Cool, yep, sure, all right. <laughs> well, I'd say it is uh, time to go home now.
definitely time to go home now. We made it into our safety box. And what a relief that is. Literally, we got so many goodies. I'm really quickly gonna go back through the nether to drop off all of our stuff. So we're gonna save all of these things. I'm actually gonna go quickly plant our nether wart since we can have this be growing. And we can have our first little nether warts. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> what? I did not expect planting nether wart to be the first seed that I plant. I guess we know where my priorities are this series, huh? And now we go into the nether, grab our stuff. This is all of the things that we're taking with us. So we've got lots of building blocks, but we need these guys with us. This is all important stuff. I have a little bit too much stuff in my inventory. We'll keep our scaffolding. We won't need sticks. We're gonna bring these two, and I think we should be good on supplies. And so we were off making our way towards the direction of where our fortress was, digging through walls, checking our coordinates, going through crimson, being very scared we were going to run into hoglins, but eventually we finally saw the fortress in the distance and made our way down to an area where we could start building our little slime lava bridging contraption. All right guys, we are here by our fortress and now it's time to build us this contraption with blue ice turning all of the lava into basalt. Now it says that I need to create a space that's even with the lava. So we need to make sure that it starts at this height so that the ice is gonna touch this lava and not be above it, not be below it. And I think like a safety box would be smart just to like block any like guests from seeing us. So we're just gonna create a wall so guests don't see us quickly. Now let's, now I'm gonna watch the tutorial and build this thing and we'll see if it works. Bridging over to the nether. So enjoy me uh, struggling to make a uh, sticky piston contraption. All right, everyone, we've made our contraption. Now we're gonna see if it's gonna work. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this note block. Let me go into free cam, cause free cam is safer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hide a bit more because I do not want to gas blowing up all of our hard work and slime slicing for just me explaining this. So if I'm in free cam, so this is what the contraption looks like and I'm gonna place this note block on top of this observer, which will start the machine. Now, the one issue that I could see is if this lava isn't deep enough, it could break this. And if our contraption breaks, well, I'm just danger bridging all the way to the bastion because uh, I've already spent enough time on this. All right, moment of truth and if I wasted all my slime blocks. Okay, let's see how this works. Oh, yeah. I'd already left some of my blocks behind. This is why I don't do things besides building. <laughs> now my challenge is gonna be getting my stuff back since it's in lava. Well, good news is I didn't lose my blocks. I just need to figure out why this didn't go uh, with it. And it looks like it got stuck on some blocks down here. So that's the other issue. But honestly, I might just go look for a strider. This has already taken me a while. But honestly, it's always worth trying something new, right? Like this is a great concept. So I highly recommend if you guys want to try this and uh, you might be able to do it better than me. In the description, I will leave the tutorial that I'm following for this. And there's a good chance I did it wrong. I'm going to go find a strider. There's one way out there, but let's see if we can find one a little bit closer. Anyone, anyone at all. All right, I think guys, we're just gonna danger bridge. Actually, so this looks like it's far enough up where it just kind of goes there. So let's actually, instead of trying to danger bridge. Oh, ugh, hi, run away, run away, run away. Yeah. Oh, wow. I got the fortress. Wow, that guy was just so scared and intimidated by me, it just had to despawn. Yeah, we're gonna go with that. Okay, so like I was saying, I think what we're gonna do is just uh, work our way up. I think that will honestly be a better way to go about it and a lot safer. 
So let me just try to work my way up here. So I spent some time digging my way up through walls and trying to figure out the best way to get directly to the fortress through our little tunnel that we were building straight up. All right, well, we made it up top and I think this was the, excuse you. This was definitely the better way to go. So let's just work our way over. Ooh, hi. And we have like a perfectly good like staircase way to get up here. Oh, this is great. Into the fortress. Are we ready for the advancement? Da -da -da. There it is, a terrible fortress. We're here, we're looking for blaze rods and we're looking for nether wart. And once we were inside the fortress, we started creating that three block high little barrier as we went around different corners just to make sure wither skellies weren't going to get us. We started looking for different chests and we were also looking for blaze rides from the blazes. So we went around exploring this fortress to find those things. <gasps> no way, are you serious? We got a rib? We got, I, this is the second armor trim we found today, guys. That's amazing, oh my gosh. <gasps> and there's another saddle, oh my word. We found the snout armor trim and the rib one. Oh, and when we get home, we get to try them on and decide how we want to style our armor. I can't wait. So after that amazing find in the chest, we were able to locate where the wart room is. So we collected up a bunch of nether wart. Then we finally came across our first bunch of blazes. And so we created some barriers, took them out one by one, collecting blaze rods, trying to keep safe and not die. We used our bow even to try to get some long shots on them. And then on the final blaze, we got them and they didn't drop blaze rods. We continued exploring some more and found the top of this one area that had a bunch of wither skellies on top. So we tried farming them to grab some skulls, but got nothing. Continued exploring until we found another chest and checked for the contents. Then we finally located the section where the blaze spawners were. So we ran our way past both of the spawners into a room that was a little more safe to set up our base camp. As we were setting up our base camp, a blaze came inside our safety room. And so we took them out and grabbed the blaze rods. Then we just spent some time going back and forth between the spawners, between the safety rooms, between the spawners, trying to stay safe, not burn alive, and collect as many blaze rods as possible. Then when we had collected enough, it was time to go back to the portal. And we are back and we can safely wear just our kimono without fear of dying. I'm super happy that we were able to survive both a bastion with piglin brutes and going into a fortress where there's wither skellies and blazes, and we came out with so much good loot. I mean, look at this. We got the rib armor trim, we got the snout armor trim, we got the snout banner pattern, we got golden apples, we got pig step, which is super cool. We got a soul speed one bug, we got some diamonds in the nether fortress. Of course, we got nether ward in the fortress as well. We got magma creams inside the bastion and we got 19 blaze rods from going to the fortress. The next thing I wanna do is decorate our armor and I know you probably think I'm gonna use the rib or the snout patterns, but I'm actually not. I wanna be able to duplicate them before I use them on armor. So instead we are going to use coast armor since we literally have so much of it. And I wanna use that on my diamond armor with the quartz as the trim. And here we go, guys. We've got our coast armor trim on our diamond armor with our quartz as the trim. And I think this looks so good. And we'll get a close up from our shoes to our leggings to our chest plate. I absolutely love it. Now with our fashionable new armor, it's time to go name the axolotls from the name suggestions that you guys left in the comments. And of course it starts raining as I show off our axolotls, but I think they don't mind the rain. So let's go grab our axolotls and name them. For our pink axolotl, we are naming them Sakura because so many of you had that name suggestion and I absolutely loved it. For our brown axolotl, we are going with the name Akuma, which means bear in Japanese. And I thought for our little brown axolotl, being named a little brown bear would be perfect. And now we can add our two new axolotls into their space. We've got Sakura, which means cherry blossom, our little pink axolotl. 
And we have Kuma, our brown axolotl. Since we have all of those blaze rods now, I kind of want to work our way over to that village that's infected and try to cure them and start on the villager grind just a little bit. But the other thing I want to do is actually connect that village up with our nether portal. So we're going to be working in the village and creating a nether tunnel between them just to make traveling a little bit quicker. Now the other thing I want to do has to do with this block right here, which you may have noticed in the last episode. Now even though this block just looks like a green waffle, it's actually exactly where our skeleton spawner is down in the caves. So we're gonna work on transforming this into an XP spawner so that I can get levels quicker. But before we work on that transformation, I think I want to go to that village during the night and cure as many as possible. So let's go make some potions to transform them and cure them first. I moved all of my potion brewing stuff down here. So let's start with blaze rods and we need nether wart. So let's grab some bottles as well. We've got our little water pool right here. We'll add three, we'll add nether wart, we'll break down our blaze rod into blaze powder, put that in there, and then we'll get our awkward potions to start with. A few moments later. I just realized I did this wrong. I was supposed to just put a uh, fermented spider eye. So let's honestly, I'm kind of just gonna make some fire potions off of this because we're still gonna need them. Next, we need to grab spider eyes, brown mushroom, and sugar for those potions. Okay. Oh, I don't think I have brown mushroom anywhere. So we have to go looking for that. But then I need spider eyes, which we have plenty of these. And I'm gonna bring gunpowder over. But it looks like we need to go collect some uh, brown mushrooms. So we've got sugarcane in here. So I'm gonna move some sugarcane over. But let's go collect some brown mushrooms next. I'm gonna close my door first. Okay, so here's the dark oak forest area. And oh, there we go. Okay, so let's take our boat and do a quick spin around. And let's go over to get that brown mushroom over there that's hiding. All right, we've got 15 brown mushrooms. That should be good for starters. All right, and now with the brown mushrooms, we're gonna make the sugar first. Then we'll make the fermented spider eye. We've got fire us potions and redstone makes it longer, doesn't it? Let's add some redstone. We're just gonna have extra fire us potions on hand. Perfect, now we have some eight. Local brewery, let's go. And now we've got some eight minutes fire as potions, so we're gonna keep those here for safekeeping. And now we're actually gonna make the correct thing since I had it wrong the first time. It's always with the weakness potion, fermented spider eye first, and not nether wart first. So we're gonna wait for these guys, and then we're gonna add some gunpowder, and we should be good to go. And so I spent some time just starting to brew up a bunch of potions, adding in the gunpowder, stocking them in the chest, adding more spider eyes, then adding the gunpowder, adding them into our chest, and repeating that process until I felt I had enough to be able to go cure the villagers. All right, we have like nine potions of weakness now and only six apples. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna leave the rest of these goodies in here. And then what we're gonna do is grab all of these potion bottles, go back upstairs. Oh, it's night. I'm gonna take this gold for now. Also, thank you to those that commented giving me the solution for why the piglins weren't actually like trading and picking up the gold. I do have mob griefing off just because I had so many endermen griefing my blocks in my last series, so I turned that off without realizing that it affects piglins. So instead, I just had to right click on them and they did start trading with me. So I have started being able to get drops from them. I just have to right click on each piglin as I want to trade. But I was told that you using vanilla tweaks, you can actually use it to turn off one specific mob from griefing so that we could still have the piglins trading, but endermen can't pick up blocks. So that's good to know for me and for you guys if you weren't aware of that either, because I definitely had no clue that was a thing, but I'm definitely gonna keep that in mind for future series because the more you know, right? Next, we're gonna quickly come inside and make some more golden apples just so that we can have enough apples to our weakness potion ratios 
videos and I think we should be good for now. So it's night right now, but I'm going to sleep through this one night and then we're going to make our way over to the village and we're going to set up a little base camp to watch them from afar and then go in at night all sneaky like. So for starters, I'm going to bring some boats because I'm going to probably have to trap villagers. We're going to bring some building blocks to keep them inside their houses. And I'm going to bring some flint and steel and we're going to grab some obsidian just so that we can make the portal when we get close. Now let's make our way over to spawn and go camp out that village till nightfall. All right, guys, I've turned all of my distances down to eight so that hopefully none of the villagers will load in as we get closer, but I'm gonna just stop here and make sure that we stay far enough away from them so that they don't load in, we don't get too close, we wait till it's nightfall. But as we get closer, I'm very excited to see how many are left, but I am a little bit concerned that because we've been in this area in the past that some of these guys have already kind of died. So I am curious to see if there's even villagers left here, and if there's not, it is gonna be a very sad, sad ordeal because that means we were not able to cure the infected village before they just, well, wandered and did villager things and walked in sunlight when they can't walk in sunlight and all that kind of fun stuff. Okay, well this village is already very quiet, which does not bode well for these guys. Um, okay, let's see if we can find anybody. And slowly as I checked inside each and every building and house, I realized that it didn't seem like there were any villages left alive until... <gasps> no, we've got one! Wait, are you kidding me? You're the nitwit? The nitwit's the only one that survived? How is this, right? Checked the last few houses, but it was true. The nitwit was the only one to survive. Well, piggies, I guess you can be free. You know, the villagers don't need you anymore because, uh, I mean, the nitwit's the only one that would keep an eye on you guys and, uh, well, he's stuck right now. Well, that definitely changes our plans for today slightly. I think we're still gonna use that village that we already passed by a few times as our main village and just collect villagers from there. And I mean, we can still transform their village area into something really cozy and cute. So I think that will still be our plan. We just don't get to cure the villagers and it's a little bit different, uh, not quite as fun, but still we're going to use all these potions because we want the cheapest prices we can get. So I think we're just gonna head back towards that one village we've been to a few times and I'll meet you guys over there. All right, and we are back at the village, but these guys are all alive so I can sleep through the night just fine, which is what I'm going to do. All right, I'm gonna keep this bed here as my little spot and this will actually be where I keep everything for these villagers for now. And then we're gonna set up a little nether portal for them here too. So let me just go find a different house to put this nether portal in and we're gonna keep the villagers out of it. But this is gonna be our village that we go with and over time we can transform this place as well. I think it is pretty fitting still that we are like right on the edge of a bunch of jungle. There's bamboo over here. Oh. And there's Azalea, lovely. And right around this corner here, there is a spider spawner, which is cool. So if we do need to get more eyes for making more weakness potions or whatnot, we can just use that spider spawner here. Next, it was time to find a house where we could set up the nether portal. And once I picked one, I just started breaking away the walls to fill it in with the obsidian, and then it was ready to light. Okay, let's go see where we are in this village nether spawn. <gasps> Oh my gosh, that was terrifying. Oh, basalt! Lots of danger blocks everywhere, love that. Okay, crimson. I feel like if there's this much crimson in this direction, this is probably the way for us to get through places. Wow, okay. Crimson there, nothing but basalt. Nice. I'm going to the overworld because I don't want to be in the basalt delta any longer. Now we know where this village ends up in the nether. We're going to spend some time bridging back from this village to our area. So I'm going to collect a bunch of building blocks so that we are able to bridge around and get places. How we're going to grab the blocks is actually a little bit of terraforming at the same time. If I go into free cam, you can see that there's lots of just like cliff faces and drop offs around here. So I'm just going to grab a bunch of dirt from right here and smooth this out so that it'll be easier to build and transform this village later on. Yeah. 
So this is what happens if you take all of the villager beds but one. <laughs> Just a big old slumber party. Except no one can sleep because there's one bed. Oh, that's too funny. Well, we have a f almost a full row of just stacks of dirt, so I feel like this is good enough to go into the nether and bridge our way back home. So we'll see how this goes, but for starters, I'm gonna kick this dude out and sleep in the, oh, oh my, oh gosh. Okay, guys, uh, no need to crowd. I'll fix your bed situation later. All right, let's see how this goes making our way back home I am just a little bit scared, but you know, it's fine. We have a fish and some baked potatoes What could go wrong? And once we were in the nether We checked to see that where our coordinates were and started making our way towards where we thought our Nether base portal was gonna be started bridging through different sections trying to be as safe as possible avoiding lava whenever possible and we finally bridged down into a more open spot, and then we realized that our home portal was closer than we realized. We just had to take out this ghast first. Hey, return to sender, let's go. I was just trying to kill him, but I'll take return to sender, destroy a ghast with a fireball. Okay, I thought this was gonna be way further of an adventure. That's actually super close. Okay, wow. Our next task was figuring out how on earth we can get down to our base nether portal. We could see our bastion from here, but it seemed like we were kind of on a floating island. Then we realized there was a bunch of crimson land hovering above our nether portal. So we began digging through the wall through the crimson forest and then hopped on the trees until we made it to the portal. Now we're back at our base area and this feels good. I didn't realize that it would literally just be like right over there and now we kind of have a little uh, way to get down and around but what we're gonna do is just kind of clean this up a little bit like this doesn't look the best it's a little bit dangerous still but basically we just go over to that pillar and then we go straight across and then right over in there is where we were trying to get down. But clearly we would not have had success making it down because there's literally no way to do it. But what I do wanna do is create a ladder system. So we're gonna go back to the overworld and we are actually gonna grab supplies so that we can make a little uh, ladder system to get down and over there. And we are back and it feels good to be home. I'm setting my spawn and taking a nap since we had a long adventure through the stressful nether. But we're gonna grab some more supplies so that we can make that tunnel a little bit more accessible and safe. I'm just gonna make a pretty much tunnel straight up with the scaffolding and that'll be our main way to get there. So that's what we're gonna work on. So let's grab some more bamboo. We're gonna grab string for scaffolding and we're just gonna make a lot more. And now we're gonna go back over into the nether, create that tunnel to the village a little bit more uh, safe. And then we're gonna go see if we can get mending quickly. Okay, so I just saw our dirt. So we're gonna create our scaffolding tower like right here because that is just about where we were and then I started towering the scaffolding up and on my way down added dirt on the side columns to box myself in so no guests could get at me and then once we got to the bottom we just kept on going back and forth creating all of the different sides till we completed it all right so now this is our way to get down to the ground level and then what we're gonna do for now is literally we're just gonna follow our little uh, cobblestone, avoid the hoglins, and just run our way back to our little portal. It, it's pretty ugly, because it's all made out of dirt, but eventually we will fix it up and make it look pretty. But for now, that's a future red problem. For now, I want to go back to our village and try to get mending because everything I have is starting to get a little bit worn down and I want my armor to be in better condition. Once back in the overworld, we decided to use this animal pen as the place to corral villagers to get them to lock in some trades. Then we did the usual reroll grind of trying to get villagers to take the correct trades and did that for a bit until we got silk touch for six. We then 
got mending for 12 and continued the process. The next problem I ran into was these golems were in the same area where I was re-rolling and picking up the trading blocks with my axe. So I had to take out these iron golems one by one and try not to get hit by them with their reach. We then traded sticks with our fletchers to get more emeralds so we would have enough mending books to put it on our armor and our tools. All right. I have been working on collecting up a bunch of mending books, and right now we have a ton of mending. So that means we can put it on our diamond armor and add it to our tools. I will be putting it on our iron sword just because it is such a good sword. Phase two of today is turning that skeleton spawner into a XP farm. So we're going back with our books, and we're gonna start transforming that spawner room into an XP farm. So let's get going. And now that we're back, we're gonna see how many mending books we can put on things, and then we're going to get started converting the XP farm into a place for us to just work on leveling things up. So we added mending to our chest plate, then our iron sword, then our silk touch pickaxe, our fortune pickaxe, then we added it to our boots and our leggings. Then we had all of our armor upgraded, so we added it to our shovel, named our shovel Silky, and we had everything upgraded. Now, one thing that I've never done before in a series is have you guys in the comments name my tools or my armor. And I think I wanna have you guys name my iron sword that I'm gonna use for my spider slicing and my skeleton XP farm slicing. So let me know in the comments what you think we should name our iron sword. This is gonna be an XP sword because I'm hopefully going to be able to get villagers or find enough diamonds to make a real diamond sword be my out and about adventuring sword. But this one is going to just be the one that we use for the slicing and I'm gonna combine it with this sword once I get enough XP so that I can add a sweeping edge to it. So these are going to be the combined ones once I'm done with it. But let me know in the comments what we should name my little iron sword here. Now, as far as how we're going to decorate the skeleton XP farm, I actually want to have a building up here. And the idea that I have is since we're going to be using our weapon, our sword to slice up these mobs and get XP, I thought it would be kind of fun to make a training dojo be the build that hides the XP farm. So what I'm thinking is we're gonna have a training dojo be above ground and then there's gonna be water shoots that are in the middle of it kind of hidden that are going to bring us all the way down to where the XP farm is and that room will also be decorated like a little training dojo and that's where we will slice the mobs. And on the top here we're gonna have our armor, our weapons, everything that we would need for training to then go down and slice up those mobs. But first things first we need to go clear out the room for the XP farm and get everything set up for our Skelly XP farm. So you know how those go guys, but I will leave a tutorial in the comments below if you wanna see the one that I'm following, but it's just your classic XP farm maker with the soul sand and the kelp and it shoots them up and brings them back down to, del to get rid of some of their health. So they're one hits. So I'm gonna go clear out that room now.
And here it is, and I think this looks so cool and cute. I tried to replicate kind of those paper wall kind of dividers that they have with just some banners. And I think it looks pretty good. I have the kind of training mats on the floor here. I had some uh, larger chests that I'm slowly getting rid of my chests and making the storage on the walls. But this is what we got, guys. I tried to incorporate as much of the green bamboo as possible because I haven't really used a lot of it yet. So I made the green bamboo kind of like a wall texture. We've got the armor that we're getting from the skeletons. We've got bone blocks just to represent what's coming out of this place. And I think this looks super cool. On the other side, we've just got some more armor. We've got pots. We've got the grindstone. We've got even the anvil so we can combine armor we're getting from these skeletons. And I think this room just looks so cool. I wanted to have the particles for both the cherry and the spore blossom, so I added some of those into our ceiling. But what do you guys think of our XP spawner? I think it fits our area very well with the theme we have of kind of like a Japanese dojo style, but we use different color palettes because I kind of want to have different color themes depending on what the room is used for. So we're using more of the green bamboo, the spruce, the oak as more of our farms color palette, with obviously our starter area being the mangrove, stripped bamboo, and dark oak. But this is our training dojo XP farm, and we just get to slice these guys whenever we need to come down and get stuff. It all just funnels into this double chest, which I might expand into more chests. If we do go behind this wall here, there is kind of like this open room back here because I had to have space so that I could access the spawner, which is right here. So we could turn this into the room where we have the additional chests. But for now, I don't need a whole lot. So we're just gonna leave it as the one chest and go with that. But I think this is just a perfect little space for what we need for now and I love this room so much and it makes me excited to spend time down here just uh, getting XP. Now we have our bubble elevator going all the way up and we have our drop chute with just some water to catch us but we need to work on creating the rooms that this XP spawner leads to. Enjoy the time lapse. All right, everyone, our above ground training dojo is done. And I think this turned out so good. Now it's quite obvious that I changed the roof shape halfway through the time lapse. I realized that the other shape we had was more of like a barn roof. And this shape reminds me more of your classic dojo and it gives us the curved edges once again, which is what I felt I was missing. So all the way around, we're just using the green bamboo blocks with spruce as kind of the trim edge for the roof. And then on the sides, we just have the green bamboo as walls with oak and spruce. We use some composters to create little planter boxes. And here's what we have on the inside. I added once again, the cherry and the spore blossom to give us both types of particles, which I absolutely love with leaves, glowberries and lanterns hanging from the ceiling. On the sides, we've got bone blocks, we've got armor stands once again, we've got stacks of bone blocks just to kind of again represent what's going to be going through this area. And we have shelves to place new things as we get them. And I think this is just so cozy. 
so beautiful. In the center, I put a little training dojo mat, and obviously, we can sleep here as well. But I think this is beautiful. I used the white stained glass panes and blocks to create a little bit of texture, even with the glass, and I really like that touch. Now, as far as our little shoots, here's the one to come up from down below, and here's our drop shoot to go all the way down, and it is a long drop shoot, but it gets the job done. And then we just come up and out into our beautiful training dojo XP spawner. Today we need to solve a problem that I've continuously had. And that is, I keep on running out of food. Now while I definitely don't mind eating some fish, I want a more solid food source. So that's what we're gonna work on today. And what I'm thinking is adding in our little sustainable food source into this area, since I said that underneath this little Tory gate is where we're gonna have more of our crops, food, farming, animal district. We're gonna be setting up a little Japanese style house to house our sustainable food source. And what might that sustainable food source be, you ask? Similar to my previous series, we're gonna be making a cow crusher because that was a super simple and easy way to get a sustainable food source and it was a great source of leather for bookshelves, paintings, and item frames. So I'm thinking that we'll build the little cow crusher farm in here and then we'll build up a little Japanese style house to uh, cover up the, uh, well, Let's just say PETA wouldn't like what we're doing. Besides building our little cow crusher farm, I also want to start creating some actual crop fields so that I'm planting more than just nether wart seeds in this world. And we can have our first little nether warts, look at that. Oh, and so I'm thinking we're going to just start creating a bunch of crop fields around here. So there'll be one crop field that's kind of housed over here. And then I'm going to build a path that goes directly from here over to where our docks area and our little cherry boat lives. So then we're just going to expand this as kind of like a pathway in between. And then we'll put another crop field kind of over here of maybe like potatoes or carrots. And we'll just kind of build this area out and put some nice little path dividers in between in our typical mangrovey, bambooey, dark oak type of vibes. But that is not the only project we're gonna be working on today because I wanna do something with our sniffer egg. Now, a few episodes back, we were able to go exploring with our archeology span brush and we found a little sniffer egg. So I was thinking of where are the places that we could put our little sniffer egg and hatch them and that would be safe, a nice little protective haven or sanctuary, if you will. And I decided that I want to use the inside of this giant dirt mound <laughs> to be the sniffer sanctuary. Going into free cam, here's what I'm imagining. So there's this bit of land that we're going to connect and it's going to be our pathway all the way up. And then we're actually gonna have the entrance to the sniffer sanctuary be right here. And we're gonna have another one of our lovely Tory gates that kind of opens up the rest of the sniffer sanctuary that's going to be inside this cave. It's gonna be cozy overgrown, kind of like they're hidden away in their own little protected area. So now that I have painted you a picture of what we're going to be doing today, let's get started making that cow crusher. All right, the cow crusher is officially done. Now we just have to cover up the fact that uh, we have a very unethical but efficient food source. But we will need to start breeding up these cows, so I'm gonna leave some wheat in here for now. And as we're building this, we're just gonna wait along the way as they're ready to breed so that we can finally get them up to their cramp capacity so uh, we actually start getting some food in our food source. Now, since we are using our similar color palette with our bamboo, mangrove, and dark oak, I'm gonna go grab us some supplies and then we'll get into the building. 
A few moments later. Okay, guys, I am hearing zombie villager groans, and I don't know where they're coming from, but I must have this person. So I'm gonna go grab a boat and figure out where they're coming from. I don't want them to like see me and come out of the forest and get burned alive from the sun. So we're gonna quickly make a boat here. I've got my little station for all of my wood supplies. So we're just gonna grab some dark oak, quickly make ourselves a boat, trap this dude, and then get some blocks above him just to make sure. And now we're gonna go find a little zombie villager. I hope it didn't despawn underground somewhere. That's like my one concern. Hello? Growly boy, where are you at? He's kind of walking. Oh, yes. Okay, we found him. Yay. Okay. Can you go in that boat? <gasps> Yay! We have a little villager that's from the jungle so quick detour we're gonna go and make some potions of weakness that's my little marker to know where to come back to okay okay we found him <gasps> yay oh my gosh I'm so excited I was wanting to have the jungle villagers in our area so badly but it was really rare to find the jungle villagers as zombie villagers so we're going to take this gold and use that on one of the apples come down here and then we've got a spider eye. We don't have any more weakness potions brewed up, so we're gonna brew one. Gunpowder's next, okay. Oh, look at this, and all of our nether wart grew up. Oh, I love that so much. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, so once we get this in here, potion of weakness, gunpowder, then we're ready to go cure a villager. And there we go. Potion of weakness. Okay, we'll leave the other two in here for now because I really only need one. So let's go back to them. And then we're gonna grab an apple, make a golden apple, put the rest of them back. Oh, by the way, guys, I found this parrot while I was clearing out the jungle. So let me know in the comments what we should name our little gray parrot friend. Okay, villager, we are coming to save you. The zombie doctor is on the way. Give you that and give you that. <gasps> oh my gosh, yay! I cannot wait until you transform. Oh, I'm so pumped. Well, while this guy uh, transforms, we also need to go and get more mangrove. So we're gonna go chop some wood. Oh, we just got zombie doctor. Let's go check on our boy. That happened a lot quicker than I thought it would. Weaken and then cure a zombie villager. Let's grab a lectern on our way so that we can convert them into a librarian. And, uh, well, we'll do some re-rolling to see if we can get anything pretty quickly. But we'll stick to today's plan for the most part. But with this guy, I think I'm gonna leave him down there for now. So if we get Unbreaking 3, or fortune three, I will be a very happy camper. And then we can make a little bookshelf. We'll make some slabs. Now we'll see if we can get to the trades we want. Hey dude, I can hear your villager noises. Hi. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this. I'll give you a torch. How about that? Well, I think what I need to do is actually like give you some proper ground to stand on. Um, so I'm just gonna use leaves. Sorry in advance. And F3 and B for the boat. Okay, now come up here. There's a little lectern for you. Yeah, you see it. Look at that line of sight. You see it, my friend. You can do it. Look at you, you're a little librarian. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. You know, this isn't the best home for you, but it'll work for now. <gasps> Look at that for one book. And we have two right here. So if we can get one of these. Okay, we're gonna quickly take a little detour, do a little bit of uh, trying to get some re-rolls to work in our favor. And so I began the tedious task of re-rolling the villager multiple times, but wasn't getting anything that I wanted, so this just felt like a grind. But then we finally got something good. Oh guys, Featherfall 4, that's so good. Oh, that's so tempting. For four books, 
But I think I honestly, I need unbreaking before that. Oh, you drive a hard bargain, sir. But unfortunately, I'm, I'm, that could be a mistake, guys. I could have just made a mistake. But I really want unbreaking three or fortune three. Then I continued re-rolling some more, but wasn't having much luck. I've been re-rolling this guy for a while, and they are not giving me what I'm looking for. I'm not getting Unbreaking 3, I'm not getting Fortune 3. So I'm just gonna re-roll it like two more times, and if I don't get it after 1 and 2, then we're just gonna leave this guy down here to think about the books that he wants to sell me. Okay, final one. Unbreaking. No. Bookshelves and paper. You did not understand the assignment, sir, so I will uh, break this and place it once more. How about now? <gasps> no shot! He got it! <laughs> oh, see? This is what I was talking about. Fortune 3, let's go. Then after crafting up some paper, I traded both paper with our new librarian and I got ourselves a Fortune 3 book for the very first time. All right, thank you for uh, providing us with the book that we wanted. I shall now leave you here. And I will come back when I need you more. Well, that was unexpected to get Fortune 3 for our picks and things. That's amazing. Now we can go put this on our pick. And we've got our Fortune 2 pick, our Fortune 3 book. There we go. It is now Fortune 3. Ooh, there we go. Yay. I was saving these diamonds for when we finally had our Fortune 3 acquired. And now that we have Fortune 3... Let's get us some diamonds. So we have three ore. I'm guessing we'll probably get... Mm, I'm gonna guess we'll get seven diamonds. Comment below how many diamonds you thought we were gonna get and let me know if you're right. But let's see what we get. I'm gonna hide my hotbar so we don't know as we collect these. Moment of truth. We got six, okay. So we got three extra diamonds. Not the best, but it's more than just three, so uh, I'll still take it. And since we now have six, I'm going to make a helmet. And I think we had extra mending, yes. So let's go see about enchanting this really quickly because we have 41 levels. This would be the perfect time to enchant it. Okay, let's see what you'll give us. Respiration three, aqua affinity, anything more? Just respiration three, okay, no worries. We've got enough levels, we'll reroll it. We'll just do a little uh, grindstone pulling off those levels. Respiration three again, anything besides just that? Friar proc, you know, we'll go at least one more time. I will go one more time on this one and then uh, we're going to just be done. Blast four, interesting. Anything else? Unbreaking three, okay, perfect. So then we'll have mending and unbreaking three. I'll, I'll take that. I think that is decent enough for me. Obviously, you know, just plain old protection would be the best of the best, but I will still take this because I'll have unbreaking three and mending. Now with that full armor bar, I feel pretty safe, but I don't feel very fashionable because I don't match anymore. I need to add coast to this helmet. Okay, and the coast armor trim, we've got quartz, and then we combine all of these things on the plate, and look at that. Now we continue collecting resources.
Alrighty guys, we have completely decorated our little food source cow crusher build and we have also created the little crop fields along our path all the way down to our boat docks. And I'm ready to show you now. And adding shaders to show it off, here's what our food source cow crusher build looks like. We've just got a pretty simple design on the outside using bamboo fences and fence gates to add some texture to it. We use mangrove and dark oak for the roof blocks and added some leaves to it as well as the glow berries. There is a gap here intentionally because I have not yet found the dead bushes. So I'm leaving that gap there to remind myself to, well, go get dead bushes. But if I go into free cam, here's a more aerial view of it all the way around. We've just got glow berries. The design is pretty much identical all the way around on the sides. We use mangrove trapdoors this time as the windows instead of our usual bamboo trapdoors. And I think this looks so good. It's super pretty. And we added another cherry tree as well, but I think this looks so good and it really adds to our area. Now, if we go down this path over here, you can see that I have the little wheat field using the little hanging signs, but I just created kind of a patch of wheat fields and we used the bamboo blocks and some leaves to kind of just edge in everything. So this is our little wheat patch over here. And then I also decorated the path with the same blocks. So down all the way, it's now safe and protected and hopefully we won't get anything coming to get us on this path. Unless I missed some two block tall ones and they can just get through the one block gaps, which we do need to be mindful of like that one. But that's a future red problem. Back to our fields. We have our little potato field here. So we just walk down this path. I put little barrels by each of the crop fields. So the excess potatoes, carrots, and wheat we can add into here. And then if we just run back down our path this way, we come to our carrot field. So these are the three different crop fields we have so far. And I feel a lot better knowing we have food when we need it. And as I was working on some things, I also did get a silk touch and mending iron hose just so I could collect the leaves a lot easier and I did put the sweeping edge on my sword and we're going to name the sword at the end of the episode from the comments you guys left last episode. Now the next phase for today is working on the sniffer sanctuary sniffer hideaway and we're going to begin hollowing out our little hillside here for our little sniffers and we're going to create a mini bridge here and I'm kind of thinking We'll kind of replicate what we have over here just at a much smaller scale. So I'm going to get working on bringing this piece of land together with the bridge and then we'll clear out the path and start digging out the inside of the Sniffer Sanctuary. So let's get started.
Now, the next thing I want to do is even though we are not yet done with our little sniffer sanctuary, I do want to have our sniffer start growing up. So let's just place our sniffer right there. Oh, look at that. My goodness. This egg is so large. Like, these are giant. I love how these are just like an ancient animal that we now get access to in Minecraft. It's pretty great. A few moments later. Well, it looks like someone grew up finally. Hi. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. Look at your floppy little ears. Look at those ears. Oh my gosh. We finally have a little dude. We have a little friend finally. Except I don't want them going outside, so I'm going to quickly make a little barrier for them. Um, excuse me, little dude. You can't leave. I forbid it. No leaving allowed, okay? You have to stay here because this is your home, okay? I'm going to make the rest of your sanctuary look a little bit nicer, so hopefully you enjoy it, okay? And then uh, we'll see what happens when you grow up. But for now, we're going to continue decorating this place. I am going to put some regular dirt down now that I was placing those blocks just because I am going to actually add some regular dirt back in here in patches just because I do want them to be able to dig and find the different seeds because I don't think they can actually dig through moss to find the seeds. It has to be through dirt. So we're adding some grass back in so they can actually dig. And now we're going to tie you up to a fence post in the middle just because I don't want them to end up, you know, going into a corner that's one block high, growing up and becoming an adult, and then, uh, well, suffocating in a wall. Because it takes a while to find the sniffers, and I feel like I got lucky finding this guy, so I don't want to risk losing this guy. I'm just gonna continue creating a nice little cozy space for our sniffer friend. Give us, buddy. Hi. Oh my gosh, you're giant. <gasps> the pitcher pod. Okay. <gasps> Thank you, buddy. Oh my gosh, guys. We have a sniffer. We've got a pitcher pod seed. <gasps> this is amazing. So I'm going to start planting some of the seeds along this edge here, I think, will be the best way to do it. So let's plant our first seed. <gasps> Planting the past. <gasps> Plant any sniffer seed. That's a cool advancement. And this is a cool little seed. Looks like a turnip to me. What do you think it looks like? And also, this just confirmed they can dig into moss. I thought they could only dig into dirt, but this guy just uh, dug right into the moss here. So I guess I didn't need to have these sections. But I think because we are going to have the little pitcher pot seeds be in here growing slowly and the little torch seeds growing slowly in here, we're gonna leave the little patches of greenery for now. I was just adding in some final details of the little cherry blossom leaves, kind of just sprinkled in here a little bit. It was kind of my idea just to create some color in here besides just having so much of the moss. But I think this is looking super cute and it will be fun to have the little sniffer plants growing in their little sanctuary with them. Hi, dude. How's he going? <laughs> You're so cute. I love their little floppy ears and especially their toes. I think sniffer toes are my favorite toes. Oh, hello. 
Now, one thing that I do need to make sure is that we don't have our little sniffer friends getting outside of their little sniffer sanctuary. So what I'm gonna do is just add in some bamboo fence gates in here. We're gonna replace this torch. So I wanna have our sniffers safe inside their area where they're not gonna escape and get out cause that way this guy can actually roam around and be free and I won't be concerned about losing them. Now I am curious, can I bone meal this? This thing is so large. Oh my gosh, oh wow, the phases are so cool. Oh, look at that, is that full grown? And then how do I, oh. Whoa, look at that, we have a pitcher plant. All right, I love this so much. <gasps> oh, someone's sniffing. You gonna find anything? I think you might. <gasps> oh, the little sploot. Oh my gosh, look at your sploot. <gasps> What'd you find, what'd you find? You find something? Oh, what a, what a noise. Oh, look at this. Oh, we got another one. Okay, let's point this one over here. Oh, I love these different phases. Okay, now that looks like a turnip. And we're gonna add a little bit of bone meal in here, but not too much, just a little bit to add some texture in here. I don't want the big plants. I just want a little bit of grass in here for them. Perfect, so now it looks very overgrown, which I like the look of. We're just gonna get rid of some of it. Cause we want it to be overgrown, but not ultra overgrown. Now I bought these pink flowers from a wandering trader and I think I wanna add some into our area. I think they'll look really cute just being a little bit of color pop to this whole section of the little sniffer sanctuary. We don't need too many, but just a few to really spice it up. Now, one of these pottery sherds is a sniffer one. So I want to put one of these decorated pots in the front area by our sniffer sanctuary. So we'll put this pot, uh, we'll move this right there. Oh, look at that. That is so perfect for the sanctuary. Yay. Oh, I love it. Okay. Perfect. Now we've got a shelter and then an angler one as well. And I think I want to use the shelter one. I actually love these things so much. And put that guy there. Look at that. A little tree and a sniffer. Now we add in the little pots. Take that one up. Put it in there. We add our bushes into them and there's our little mossy ones. This doesn't really stand out a whole lot and I think I'm kind of okay with that. I just want it to kind of be like an archway and I think the pots with the little bushes in them actually does that exact trick for me. This pot guys is definitely my favorite. And now it is time to decorate the path leading from this sniffer sanctuary down to our mini bridge. Okay, everyone, the path is decorated, the sniffer sanctuary is done, and we even have some of the pitcher plants added into our landscape as well. And here's what we have coming from our little mini bridge. We can just walk across our bridge with the spore blossoms, leaves, and glow berries, and our usual bamboo-y, mangrove-y, dark oak vibes. Crossing the bridge is where we start to have a change and it hints that there are sniffers nearby us. So then we just go up this path with the bamboo and the leaves kind of edging it in, keeping us safe with some lanterns and some pitcher plants along the way, as well as the classic potted mossy azalea bush. And then if we just keep on going up, we come to the entrance of our sniffer sanctuary where we have our little sniffer pot and our shelter pot. And then we have a nice little vibey cherry tree to the left. But as we enter, it's just very overgrown. We start to see even more hints that there's sniffers nearby. And we just get to walk down and around the corner till we come to our little sniffer gate. I decided to use mangrove and bamboo slabs. You can't see it super 
super well, but there's an awning with three different levels to create kind of a mini roof in here to kind of mark our gate. But then on the inside, this is our sniffer sanctuary, guys. It's very overgrown. We have our little sections where we can grow new plants that our sniffers pick up for us by our ponds. But we've got our big drip leaf, small drip leaf, lots of just greenery, flowers, mushrooms, glowberries, leaves, and we even have a spore blossom and I hid some cherry blossoms in here as well so that we can have both the green particles from the spore blossoms and the pink particles. Now as I've been picking up sniffer seeds, so far they've just mainly been dropping the pitcher pods, but we did get a torch flower seed and I wanted to grow this one with you guys since this is the first torch flower seed we've gotten. So here's the different growth stages. I think they're so pretty. So you just use bone meal twice and there's a torch flower. Look at that. We got a new recipe as well and I think it's so cool. One thing I didn't think about, but these new flowers can be turned into dyes. So the torch flower turns into orange dye and the pitcher plant turns into two cyan dye since technically these are two blocks tall. Now since we have our little torch flower, I do want to add this along our path somewhere and I I think right here will be a little nice spot for them since they are a smaller flower. I think it's perfect. Now that our sniffer sanctuary is done and we have a nice little decorated path leading up to our sanctuary, there's one thing I forgot to show you guys earlier and that was actually the inside of the cow crusher build. So as we walk up to our cow crusher build, on the inside we just use bamboo planks as our flooring, but here's what we have on the inside. We have smokers ready to smoke up the meat. We've got our little cow crusher in the center. We added glowberries and lanterns, bookshelves, and a spore blossom to give the particle effects because you all know I love those. And around back we've got some chests. We've got two little potted plants with a little classic mushroom and little white flower, and then at the top, we've got the crafting table, another chest, and a little fern in a plant pot. Now, even though there isn't much to this build on the inside, I still really like it because to me, it's still a really cozy build, and that's my favorite kind of build. Just don't pay attention to the circle of cows inside a block game. It's fine. Now, the last thing we have to do today is name my sword from your comments. You guys gave me so many great name suggestions for my sword, but since I'm only gonna have one sword for my XP collection. I, I could only pick one of the names. Now the name I'm selecting was left by Pixel Sadon, who said we should name it the Kaiken Blade because Kaiken means experience in Japanese. So thank you Pixel Sadon for the name suggestion. For today's episode, I was sniffing, I mean, thinking that we don't have an iron farm yet and that's one thing that I keep on having to go down in the caves to go get and it would just be a lot easier if I just, well, made an iron farm. So that's one of the things that we're going to work on today. I also want to go and actually look for some bees. In FreeCam, I absolutely love looking from an aerial view how our area is transforming over time and I think that adding some bees to bring some life would just be great. But before we get started with any of that, I have something to show you guys. And I know a lot of you really like this skin, but we've had it covered up by armor for so long, and guess what? That's right. I finally got a mod that hides my armor so that I can just have my cute little kimono, but I will still be wearing my full set of diamond armor with our little armor trims but you don't get to see it. You just see the cute vibes. And if anyone is interested in getting this mod added to their world, check the description below the video because I added them there. So now we can continue preparing for today's episode in just our little kimono. I first need to figure out where the heck I want to build it. And I think because we have our skelly farm over on this side of the bridge that I want to kind of start making this be our farming area. And I also want to have the roof colors and tones be similar. So with our skelly farm right here along this side of the path, I was kind of thinking it could be cool to add our iron farm on this side of the path and do a similar little pagoda 
and use our green bamboo wood because I feel like it's a really cool wood block, but we don't get to use it very much because, well, Mojang only made full blocks, they didn't make slabs of the green bamboo, and uh, I am a little bit sad about that because I would love to use the slabs and stairs in the green bamboo. But alas, we will build with full blocks because we can, and we're gonna put the little iron farm right in here. I think this will be great, and then we'll just have a really nice path that we're going to add in today in between both of these builds, and we're gonna also so clean up this path specifically right here. All of these vines just keep on growing down on the path and sometimes I accidentally climb the vines instead of just jumping up the, the full blocks. So super fun. So we are going to clean up this path, make our iron farm and go on an adventure to find some bees and just do a general kind of path cleanup of our area because one very simple way to make your whole area come together is actually adding paths and lighting to make everything more cohesive. So we're gonna do a little bit of that on this side of things. So I'm just going to collect some supplies to build everything up that we'll need for today. So I'll just come back with you guys once we have everything that we need brought over to our area. All right, everyone. I have the majority of the supplies we'll need to make the iron farm. We just need to go collect one bucket of lava and another bucket of water. And then we're gonna go and put together the iron farm itself. And then we're gonna go look for a zombie to hopefully wear some armor. And then we're gonna go back to our village and we're actually going to boat some villagers over here. And we'll see how that goes. I have a feeling it'll be a pain in the butt, but I mean, it's, it's villagers. Like, would you expect anything less? So even though it's raining outside, we're gonna go find ourselves some lava and grab some water from our little river here really quick and hopefully be good to go. So I grabbed a bucket of water, then grabbed a bucket of lava and got the advancement hot stuff. All right, now we have everything we need to start building this little iron farm up and I'm actually using a different tutorial than I usually have used for my iron farm. So you can check the link in the description to see the iron farm tutorial that I'm following this time. The main difference between the iron farm tutorial I'm following this time is it's going to be underground completely. Usually the one that I choose has the iron golem spawning on top. It's kind of like floating up in the air, but I'm gonna try one where everything happens underground. Now I do need to make sure that if there's caves nearby that I do uh, spawn proof those in case iron golems would spawn in there instead. So keep that in mind if you make this in your own world. Now as far as how we're making the design of the pagoda that goes on top, I'm gonna keep it very similar to this, but I might use dark oak to edge this, just because we've been using dark oak for a lot of other things in our build, so I think that will look good. But I might mess around with changing out dark oak for the edges of the trim, but the size of it's probably going to be pretty similar. So we're just going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And then we're just gonna make it go all the way through here. Yeah, I think this will be good. And it gives us lots of space, making a little pagoda for our iron farm. I like it, let's get building. No, no, thank you. Goodness, no, no, no. J j don't go by the bed. Oh, there we go. Finally on water in our bamboo raft, moving our villager over so uh, uh, they can be terrified the rest of their life. You know, dealing with villagers in Minecraft, it always makes you feel a little bit sad you know, if you actually think about it, like I'm gonna put this dude in a hole with two other people and perpetually scare them so that they have somebody else that protects them spawn in to save them and I'm going to burn that person. Sometimes Minecraft, if you think about it, is a little bit deep and it's a little, uh, little dark, but we're, we're just gonna ignore it. You know, uh, we're, it's, it's for the greater good. It's for the advancement of our area and um, yep. We're just gonna go with that. All right, so we got our dude. 
we've got their lectern and I'm first going to figure out the path that we're going to bring this person on to bring them all the way up and hopefully we can create a pretty straight path. I am going to use blocks to help me get through because, well, this is, oh yeah, this is our lush cave. There's our little bamboo house. Yeah, I don't want that. Okay. So I think what I want to do is just work our way through here. There's a little skeleton conversation happening there. Oh no, I looked at the Enderman. Hi, bud. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. Oh, bro, just come here. Come here. Let me tickle your toes. Yep, let me tickle them. Just a little, little toe tickle. Yep, come on. All the way down. You got it. Yep. Well, I'll take three pearls. We do need to start getting pearls just because we will eventually go and find the stronghold and fight the dragon and all that, so I'll take the pearls. But back to what I was saying, we're just going to work our way through the jungle here, clearing a nice little path, making it as straightforward as possible. All right, we connected up our little dirt bridge to fully go past our giant ravine and bring our little friend all the way into their forever home. I'm gonna get rid of some of these bamboo bits just in case it interferes with the boat and same with some of these leaves because we're not going to risk it. And we've got a little friend. <gasps> Oh, it's a sick one. Okay, quick detour. I need this dude very badly. Hi, little dude. Oh, look at your little sick face. You're so cute, but you need a Kleenex, yeah. Oh, look at your little sad face, buddy. I'm so sorry, that's no fun. Here, have a boat, yeah. Can I give him bamboo from here? Yeah, oh wow, I didn't know they could sit in the boats and eat. Yeah, look at the little guy, he's so cute. Oh, I love them. Okay, but enough distractions. Now that we have our panda, I, I do want to start collecting one by one the different types of pandas and breeding them up because I definitely plan to have a panda sanctuary in our bamboo jungle area. Because if I didn't, like, am I even building in a bamboo jungle? So what I'm going to do do is place their lectern there and then we're going to bring them closer so that they can see their little lectern and crawl up the shoreline. Okay, so now we've got two of our villagers, which is great, mending and uh, breaking. I, I like it. So now we just are gonna go and grab our villager that's in the hole and well, bring them to a, a different hole. Um, I feel a little bit bad about that, but you know, it's, it's fine.
Okay, now I just get you to go in the hole. Let me just, excuse me, can you not face through me? Can you just move? If I just like keep blocking you in, you won't have very many choices. No, 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 this is just me, no, no, no. No, you don't need to be scared. There's water at the bottom, you're fine. Okay, fine, we'll do it this way. All the way down. There we go, ha <laughs> ha. Outsmarting the villagers with water. Also, I love the jungle villager shoes. Like, look at those little sandals. They kind of look like a face. Now I can't unsee that. The next phase is to work on the iron golem portion of this iron farm, so let's get into building that up. Next, we prepared the drop chute for the zombie to plop down into his spot and created some walls so the iron golem wouldn't attack him. Next, we dug up to the surface, and then we went out at night to find ourselves a zombie. you around. Found ourselves a second zombie and kept dropping objects for them to try to pick them up. Okay, I don't want to kill you if you don't wear them, but I might have to kill you if you don't wear them. And then we had to kill them because they were picking up anything and we wanted ones that do pick them up to actually spawn. Then we spent the day at our skelly farm with our kaiken blade, just getting some XP while we waited for the next night cycle. On the third zombie we found, this one was holding a shovel and for whatever reason, at that moment, I was so excited that they were holding something because they wouldn't despawn, which I, I figured out is incorrect, but that's a that's a later on episode red thing. Then we got the zombie trapped in our box, and we started setting up the box over by the drop chute to get our zombie to go down, and eventually, once we had it all set up, we led our zombie over to it, and after a little bit of persuasion with a water bucket, they finally went down the chute. All right, now we can get rid of our little monstrosity. I am gonna leave that block there just to signify where our zombie did go in, just so I remember where it is in case we need to ever replace our little dude. And me saying that we need to replace this dude was in fact 100% foreshadowing. Now that our zombie was in place, we went down our ladder to go clean up the drop chute that we had created to continue creating the iron farm. Put the chests in place, then added the hopper, and tested to make sure it was working and continued with the process. The next step was to add the signs in, and I would recommend to put the signs in place first before you add the water because you can clearly see I was struggling. And that was perfect timing to show you guys the uh, iron farm in action. It's it's working great. So far, I'm, I'm happy with this. Let's do a 10 minute AFK session to see what we can get in 10 minutes. So I'm going to grab this iron out and start a timer right now for 10 minutes. I just wanted to take this time to say thank you guys so much for all the support on our 1.20 series so far. It makes me really happy to see all of your comments just saying how much you're enjoying this. You like the cozy vibes, you like the Japanese inspired vibes and that we're building with the bamboo wood palette. I've had a lot of fun with it as well, but I'd love for you guys to let me know in the comments what other builds you think would be super fun for us to add to this world, so let me know. All right, it has been 10 minutes, and here's what we get in just 10 minutes 45. And there was an iron golem that tried to spawn right here. So we're gonna go get carpet so that we can lay carpet down and not have any of the golems trying to spawn down here. So now we're gonna go grab some carpet and then add that down to spawn proof the floors. And I think I had carpet either in one of these chests. Here we go. Perfect, so we've got some carpet here. So let's add some carpet down there and we should be good to go now. Okay, and I'm gonna spawn proof the floor right here. All the stairs, this whole section, add some more carpet and then we'll just close up the spot and we should be good to go. All right, the iron farm is officially working so we can move to phase two, which is collecting the resource blocks. 
and making our little iron farm pagoda. So let's get into it. A few moments later. So I was just dropping off some stuff when I noticed it's oddly quiet down here and I have a feeling that the zombie despawned. Yeah. Uh, that's a rip. I thought that if he had the shovel in his hand because he was holding an item, he wouldn't despawn. But I guess if they spawn with the item in their hand, they can despawn. But if they pick up something from me, they won't despawn. Then it was back to setting up our drop chute so that a zombie could go back down into the spot. Next, we went out at night to try to get another zombie to pick up the helmet, and this one didn't want to either, so eventually, after trying to throw him blocks, we, uh, we had to kill this one. Okay, you're not the one wearing a helmet that I had in mind. No thank you. No thank you. No thank you. Oh wow, they're really spawning now. Okay, who's gonna pick up the hat or items? Yeah? All right, let's try this. If I just stand here, ooh. Okay, if I stand here. One of you should pick that up. If there's a horde, we have to have the chance of it. Or some dirt blocks, how about that? Will you, any of you pick up anything? They did not pick up anything. All right, I guess I'm just collecting your XP until your friends come by. Well, we didn't have any luck with that group that uh, spawned here, but we were able to find a wandering trader stopping by, except there's nothing that I'm super interested in. Like, I can get most of this. I don't really need puffer fish right now. So I'm just leaving him alone, and I'm thinking that we're just going to uh, keep collecting supplies until it's night, and then come back here and hope for some zombies. I still can't believe I let that guy despawn, and I just thought the spoon was gonna be okay in his hand. I should have known. I'm sure in the comments, you guys were like, no, Red, it's not gonna stay, he'll despawn. Yes, I, uh, I figured it out. So we were back to trying to get zombies to pick up blocks, and then when they don't, I have to slice them. Came across three creepers trying to rush me all at once, which was a little bit scary, but I took them out with my bow. Found another zombie, threw him some blocks, he didn't pick him up, so they had to go. And finally, I decided that I would just name tag the zombie, which I could have done from the beginning, but I didn't, and we nicknamed them Frankie for Frankenstein. So we started building up the walls as we waited for the next night cycle. Finally found a zombie to name tag, and then he brought a friend, so we had to get rid of the friend name tagged our dude Frankie, and had another friend of his stop by. And he also had to go. Then I started closing up some of the holes in the wall so that no more zombies could come, but then eventually we had a horde to deal with and slowly take out so that we only had Frankie. And I had to be very careful not to accidentally kill Frankie. When we finally just had Frankie left, I made a wall so that no one else could get through and then slowly but surely tried to lure Frankie over to our little drop chute for them. And then eventually we finally got them to go down in our little hole. So then we could finally build up our pagoda. Enjoy the time lapse.
All right, everyone, our iron farm pagoda is done and decorated. And here's what we have. From the outside, we just decorated with a bunch of the vines. We use leaves to top our roof and kind of have them draped over the edges. I also decided to use some of the iron blocks, both hanging from iron chains and actually just placed on the corners just to kind of let people know that this is actually the iron farm. All of our iron will come from here. And then of course, we're using the new big pots from 1.20. We used some netherrack to texture our mangrove roof. And then we just have lanterns and all the little corner bits. And all the way around, we just kind of put little stacks of iron blocks just so that people know this is our iron farm and just to kind of decorate around it. We obviously have a little cherry blossom tree, which sometimes, guys, how these spawn like growing like this just doesn't make sense to me. So we are gonna fix this tree and make it look a little bit more uh, normal because no, no tree has that type of a bend in it most of the time. It just looks a little strange to me, but I do love the particles. But that is the outside of what it looks like. We've just got some glowberries kind of decorated in here as well, but this is the inside. Now, of course, we've got our iron blocks hanging from our chains and just stacked up in corners. We've got the big pots on both sides and we just used glowberry little pots with flowers and mushrooms. We added an amethyst, we've got vines. I think the glowberries add a really nice touch. We've got our furnace and our crafting tables in here and some chests. We've got a little bed and of course we've got some bookshelves with the new chiseled bookshelves and added some books inside in case people want to do some research on the iron farm and how all that works. But this is what our iron farm pagoda looks like on the interior and I think it looks really cute. The only thing that it's really missing is it doesn't have the spore blossom particles. So let's go find one quick. And we drop all the way down. There we go. And there's one right there. Gonna just quick grab some coal. I think decorating with some raw iron blocks would also look really cool. So we're gonna grab some of these guys as well. And there's the spore blossom. So if I just drop that down. Okay, perfect. Now we just drop back down and perfect. We then found a second spore blossom, but accidentally dropped it down into a dark cave. So of course we had to go retrieve it. Okay, so I've bridged from our area all the way over to here so I can jump down in the water and then I've collected up blocks along the way so that I can at least tower back up with the tough and the deep slate. And I think this should be pretty good. It kind of seems like there's light on the ground there, so maybe that's where I've been before, but there's the spore blossom that we want to pick up. So that's what we're aiming for in this situation. So we need to have two spore blossoms as a run. But uh, let's, uh, let's do this. We've got our sword, we've got our food in our hand, and here we go. Oh, honey, you had a sword, didn't you? Okay, spore blossom, there we go. Perfect, we're just gonna light this up. Perfect, okay, we're doing good. Ooh, those are creepers. This is great, okay, so far so good. Just light it up quick. Okay, and that was all of them. We have our two spore blossoms. Oh, I actually know where I am. Oh, this is so cool. This is by our mine shaft. What do you know? And if people want the cords for my mine shaft, you can just look at the cords on the screen and that'll get you to the mine shaft area, just straight over in this area. But honestly, while I'm here, Let's get a few of these spore blossoms, shall we? Might as well, right? I mean, we're here. And got the fifth one. Perfect. Okay, I think that's good for now, but uh, ooh, diamonds. Never mind. I saw diamonds. We're getting the diamonds. Beautiful. Okay, we're getting at least two. I like it. Oh, we get three ore, yay! Oh my gosh, yes. Love that for us, okay. There we go. Perfect, we got six. And 
And now we go and we stack up. Oh, and I just heard a baby. Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, and the baby has a sword. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad I got out of there. All right, and we are back up by our little farm pagodas. And let's add our spore blossom into the center. We don't need this lantern. And there we go, and with shaders on, and our spore blossom giving us the particles. They're definitely one of my favorite things to add into my Minecraft worlds because I just like how it adds some kind of movement to the worlds. I think it adds a lot. All right, I added some of the stone iron ore on this side, and then on the other side, I added some of the deep slate iron ore, and I think it looks super cool, especially with the complementary shaders on, making the ores glow. It looks so pretty. But now that we have the little particle effects going, this is perfect. Next, we're going to work on cleaning up some of these paths because I really don't like how the podzol looks mixed in with the grass. I just would rather have it be grass and path blocks. So we're going to work on cleaning up our paths next. So let's get into it. For the paths between the iron farm, skelly farm, and our bridge, we just used some path blocks and coarse dirt and kept it simple, but I still think it adds a lot. Next, I spent some time adding some dark oak slabs in between all of our different layers, just so that it would be a little bit easier to be walking up and down our paths. All right, I have fully decorated our paths. We added some leaves to the edges and I think it adds a lot. I also added the slab so that it makes it a little easier to walk up. And I did that on the other side as well. Now, the other part that I want to quickly change out is adding in some of these full green bamboo blocks into our perimeter, kind of like we have on the trail paths on the other side by our crop fields. So we're gonna go grab a little bit of the green bamboo and then we're gonna go and collect some bees and go searching for some bees so that we can start breeding them up back here and eventually we'll make a cute little apiary for them. But we need to find them first and have enough to make an apiary worth it. So once we get the green bamboo, place that in, we're gonna go looking for some little bee friends. Okay, and with that, we've added in our green bamboo to our little trail edges. And I think it makes it come together with this area a lot more since the green bamboo is kind of what we're using for our little uh, farms area. Now let's go to sleep since it's dark outside and then we're gonna go find some bees. I also just realized I had my armor toggled on this whole time. I accidentally hit the button and I've been so used to just wearing my armor that I didn't even realize that I had my armor on the whole time because I'm just so used to seeing this lately because we didn't have the armor hidden mod. But he's off. I'm safe. I'm armored, but I'm, I'm safe. So we're, we're gonna just walk around, go back to spawn area since that's where I saw some bees. But we're gonna take the nether route because that village that's by spawn does happen to have some bees nearby it, so that's where we're gonna go collect our little bees from. But we're grabbing our golden helmet to keep the piglins off of us, and then going into the nether. Okay, and there's a hog in there, so I just need to be careful. Okay, you don't see me. You don't see me, you don't see me, you don't see me, you don't see me, you don't see me. Yes, you see me, but I'm gonna run quicker than you can get to me. Okay, we are back at the village. Our little villagers are still doing good. Now, I'm pretty sure, okay, yes, so there's a beehive right here. So I kind of wanna wait till evening and the bees will come back to their hives before I take them, but I'm gonna place a campfire down by this one so that I am going to be able to harvest the honeycomb because once we harvest the honeycomb, <gasps> yes, okay. We're gonna be able to make candles because we have our spider spawner as well. So we're gonna have unlimited candles once we make a little bee farm. I'm gonna move the campfires because the bees are hurting themselves. That was scary. We're gonna use our crafting table and make some trapdoors so that these dudes don't end up hurting themselves on these campfires. So we're gonna go like so. Okay guys, it's almost time for bedtime. 
If you wanna, you know, go in your beehive, look at the sun, it's going down. You see that? Yep, look at that, it's going down. You're gonna go in your bed. Oh, there's one. There we go, there we go, okay. <gasps> look at that, total bee location, let's go. Move a bee's nest with three bees inside it using silk touch. <gasps> Yay, okay, we've got our first bee nest. Now I'm gonna sleep and go find some more. Sniper. Okay, we found a another little bee nest. Now I don't know if there's actually bees in this one or not, but there's definitely some honey. So we're just going to use our silk touch and grab this one and grab the campfire as well. There we go. All right, here's another one with some bees around it. So we're going to set up our usual little campfire. I'm going to make sure that I use a trap door so they don't get hurt. Perfect. And we'll take some honeycomb and we'll wait until they actually go into their little hive. Decided to start breeding up some more bees so that we would have more to bring back home with us. Then bred up some more, grabbed some honeycomb, then collected up the hives one by one at night. Oh, are you kidding me? The one giant hole in the ground is where the honey goes down. Okay, and I heard the bees inside their nests. So now we have a total of seven bee nests. So I think that's pretty good to head on home. And we're just going to leave these in a chest for now because I don't want them to escape and wander off or have anything happen to them. So our bees will just go in our foliage greenery box. And I am curious to take some string and some honeycomb and look at this, we can make candles. You know, let's go add some into our iron farm real quick cause I think they would be pretty vibey. So for candles, I am choosing to make them gray, light gray and white just because it will fit our little iron farm theme very nicely. Let's go put them up. All right, we've got all of our candles. Now let's do two dark grays right here. We'll do two of the light grays right here. And let's do the white ones right there. Okay, perfect. Now let's throw on some shaders, shall we? And there we go with our candles in here. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love adding the candles. They just add so much. It's so cozy in here. This is a great spot to AFK. As long as you don't listen to the iron golems dying, uh, it's fine. Now, the last thing we're going to do in today's episode is name our little gray parrot from your comments. Also, I just have to say complimentary shaders at night is so beautiful with the northern lights and the stars. It's so magical and pretty. Ugh, I love it so much. So the name I chose for our parrot is going to be Arashi, which means storm in Japanese. So thank you to those of you that suggested this name. Let's go name tag them. Okay, little dude, you officially have a name. My YouTube community named you, well, you don't know what that is, but they're they're cool people, but they gave you a name and your name is now Arashi. There we go, there he is, all named and cute. So everybody, meet Arashi. We've gone on so many fun adventures, experienced plenty of chaos, and of course made so many cozy builds over the course of this movie. Now while I'm ending this movie here on episode 8, since it's already almost been four and a half hours of cozy chaos, this is only part one of the cozy movie adventure in our Japanese inspired world. So stay tuned for part two of this movie adventure in the bamboo jungle, and if you can't wait and you want to watch more adventures past episode 8, feel free to click the video card to continue watching episode 9, and I'll see you in the next one. One.